Chapter 481 Kill His Way Into The Wind Spirit Pavilion Translator Born to be I would have thought that you'd want to thank me. Seeing that Long Chen didn't say anything after a long time, Xu Wuhan finally broke the silence. Within the huge plaza, only the two of them were present. The atmosphere was slightly heavy, because from the start, Long Chen had only just been staring into the distance silently. If someone should be thanking someone, it should be you thanking me, right? Long Chen smiled slightly. Oh? Why is that? If I tell the truth, will I end up being killed to keep me quiet? Long Chen looked at Xu Wuhan. Although in terms of age, Xu Wuhan was old enough to be his grandmother's grandmother's grandmother. Her youthful appearance made others forget her age. If it weren't for a certain look in her eyes that said she had experienced all the vicissitudes of life, others might really think she was a simple and pure maiden. You can speak. I'm not so intolerant. Xu Wuhan smiled ever so slightly. She had a strange feeling when she looked at Long Chen, as the intelligence he had displayed did not match up to his age. If she hadn't sensed that his soul fluctuations matched his spiritual key fluctuations, she would definitely suspect he had been possessed by some old demon. There are two reasons I don't need to thank you. The first one is that this chaotic situation with the first monastery was all caused by you. Previously, I didn't really understand what was going on here. But from how furiously Sao King Gaia was clenching her teeth when she left, I can tell she ended up falling for your trap. During all these years, you intentionally let her and her son work together, allowing them to turn the supermonastery into a state of turmoil and chaos. As for yourself, you just kept yourself in seclusion and paid no heed. But in truth, you were just waiting for a chance. A chance to catch them in a mistake. A chance to defaturing Sao King Gaia in a single move. Although I don't know what relationship you have with Sao King Gaiu, I can guess both of you come from two separate large powers that compete with each other secretly. Most likely, she came to the super monastery to keep watch over you, while you were always looking for a way to get rid of her. You feigned weakness, intentionally giving all the authority to her, all to find a chance to crush her. In order to get rid of her, you let her turn the super monastery into its current state. I wonder just how many people ended up becoming sacrifices because of this little game of yours. And so I don't need to thank you. As for myself, although I wasn't a direct part of your game, due to what happened, I ended up affected indirectly. It could even be said I have a right to hate you, as I was just a single chiss piece in your hand, said Long Chen, looking at Xu Wuhan expressionlessly. Xu Wuhan was silent for a long while. In the end, she sighed. I really wouldn't have thought you'd be this perceptive at this age. Then let me ask you, do you hate me? Long Chen shook his head. I don't hate you. I also don't need to hate you. Hate is the feeling of the weak. This matter can't be blamed on you, because even if someone else was in your position, the result would probably be roughly the same. It would just be a different method. At the very least, your current position is extremely beneficial to me. And in truth, there is at least one thing that I have to thank you for. You didn't wait until Sao King Gaiu killed all of us before appearing. Originally, in order for you to get the most profit, you should have waited until she had trapped herself into a corner before taking action. That way, she would definitely be given the death penalty. But today, although you managed to get rid of her for now, her crimes aren't necessarily enough to warrant her death. So that means you still have a bit of benevolence at the bottom of your heart. Looking at this youth, Xu Wuhan was filled with shock. Long Chen was really too terrifying. With just a few clues, he had managed to deduce the rough situation, and his deduction was quite accurate. That was especially true when he had said she should have waited until he and everyone else had been killed. She truly had been thinking like that at the beginning. But in the end, she hadn't been able to bear doing that and had gone out prematurely. She sighed. You're right. I really was unable to just watch so many top geniuses be killed so young. Xu Wuhan had to admit. When it came to being ruthless, she was greatly lacking compared to Sao King Gaiu. Otherwise, she could have long since gotten rid of her. So I'll still need to thank you for this, said Long Chen. There's no need for you to thank me. I saved you because you were all my super monastery's disciples. Only once you all grow up can you be useful to me. Currently, I've given the first monastery to you. As for how you plan on growing, that'll be up to you. Originally, once you reached the bone forging realm. You should have been sent to the super monastery to be raised. However, now you have the first monastery's resources, which is enough for you to grow. Only the lower ranking monasteries have to send their disciples to the super monastery. As for how you split up the resources, I won't interfere. Right now, 
the monastery competition no longer has any meaning. Thanks to you, the supermonastery's core strength has been greatly damaged. I can only place my hopes on the few of you. When she said these last few sentences, Xu Wuven's expression became a bit odd. Long Chen also felt slightly embarrassed, but that had been unavoidable. Who had asked them to try and take his life? As for the Yun family, you don't need to be afraid of them. I can help you keep them at bay, and they won't dare do anything to you as long as you are within the monastery. However, you also can't be careless. It seems you've caused that girl to suffer quite miserably. Each time her poison flares up, she feels enough pain as to want to die. During those times, she ends up tearing at Han Shianaya with her teeth. Apparently, Han Shianaya ends up beaten black and blue each time, said Shu Wuhan. Han Shianaya also went to the Yun family, yes. He has a few smarts. When Yun Wushuang was sent back to the Yun family, he knelt on the ground and swore in the face of all those Yun family members that he wished to marry Yun Wushuang, promising to look after her for a lifetime. Back then, he ended up moving quite a few of them, and so they permitted him to stay within the Yun family. But for some unknown reason, each time Yun Wushuang's poison flares up, she'll torment him as if her life depends on it. That puzzles her family members, said Xu Wuhan. Long Chen sneered inside. Isn't the reason simple? It was all deliberately set up by yours truly. Han Shian I wanted me to kill Yun Wushuang, and Yun Wushuang wasn't stupid enough to not see that. She saw through that immediately. How could she not hate him? In truth, that thousand heart snow lotus would only cause Yun Wushuang's constant pain to become bursts of pain. Each time the poison flared up, she would feel enough pain as to want to kill herself. And when she felt that pain, she would naturally find Han Shian Iu displeasing and torment him. With the Yun family's arrogance, they wouldn't help Han Shian Iu avoid her. If Yun Wushuang wanted to torment him, then she could do as she pleased. The Yun family always looked down upon outsiders who married into their family. Originally, Long Chen had been a bit worried about the two of them. Now hearing the two were so blessed, he was much more at ease. Long Chen, just what did you feed her? Why are countless pill cultivators completely helpless? It was a mixture containing several hundred different poisons that complement each other. Based on the combination, there are thousands of different possible formulas that could be the antidote. But only one of them is right. If they give her the wrong one, she will immediately die. So they don't dare take the risk, explained Long Chen. You really are ruthless. You might be fine within the monastery, but when you go outside, you have to be careful. Ancient families are known for being hard to deal with, warned Shu Wuhan. Yes, nodded Long Chen. As for the pill tower, you don't need to be worried. This time, they ended up committing a grave crime, drawing the righteous path's displeasure. Due to being in the wrong, they won't be making any movements for now. Hua Wufang had gone too far this time, to publicly use the name of the pill tower to call the righteous and corrupt disciples to attack Long Chen. He had completely infuriated the righteous path. Thinking of Hua Wufang, Long Chen smiled coldly. Long Chen had fed him a poison that would adhere to his bones. That poison had seeped into Hua Wufang's bones, and soon as someone tried to heal them, it would immediately trigger the poison, filling him with pain. Even if they didn't try to heal his bones, that poison would still feel like countless knives stabbing his bones. Furthermore, the pill tower would definitely give him some medicinal pills in an attempt to stop that pain. Those medicinal pills truly could stop Hua Wufang's pain. That was because the poison would treat those medicinal pills as nourishment and focus on devouring them instead of Hua Wufang. Once the pain-relieving pills were devoured, the poison would once more begin to gnaw on his bones. The poison would become even stronger after having consumed those pills, making him feel even more pain. Reporting to Monastery Head, there's someone looking for Boss Long Chen who says she's from the Wind Spirit Pavilion. Guo Ran hastily ran over. Long Chen's expression changed, and he was just about to say something when Xu Wuhan said, You can go. I'm truly sorry. Long Chen cupped his fists and hastily followed Guo Ran down the mountain. Arriving at the gate, he saw a round faced maiden pacing quickly back and forth. Long Chen immediately recognized her to be the one from the secret realm who had asked Men Qi to come back to them. Senior Apprentice Brother Long Chen, please come and save Senior Apprentice Sister Men Qi. She, this maiden collapsed into tears. Long Chen's expression completely changed and he hastily asked, What happened to Men Qi? Feng Xiaozi's death infuriated the pavilion master, and he had Senior Apprentice Sister Men Qi imprisoned, as well as crippled her soul root. He wants her married off to Feng Xiaozi's little brother. From that maiden, they learned that from the start, 
the pavilion master had placed his sights on Meng Qi's soul root, and thus prepared to have her married to Feng Xiaozi. Si. With their powerful soul energy, their children would definitely be peerless geniuses. Originally, he had been planning on waiting until the two of them had reached the Xi'anshan realm before carrying that out, but he had never expected Feng Xiaozi si to die within the secret realm. Furthermore, Meng Qi had betrayed the Wind Spirit Pavilion to side with Long Chen, that had completely infuriated him and he had almost directly killed Meng Qi. However, killing her was too wasteful. He would have his other son take the place of Feng Xiaozi to marry Meng Qi. He would turn Meng Qi into a tool to birth his progeny. Hearing this, Long Chen's hair stood on end from fury. He asked for a map of the location of the Wind Spirit Pavilion from the Maiden and was just about to kill his way into the Wind Spirit Pavilion. Boss, I'll go gather our people, said Guo Ran. There's no need to go to that much trouble. I'll go with you. Suddenly. Xu Wuhan appeared in front of Long Chen, grabbing him with one hand. The two of them disappeared from their original location. Chapter 482 Furious Long Chen Translator Born to be the Wind Spirit Pavilion was located on the border between Su Prefecture and He Prefecture. It was the hegemon of the surrounding sects. Although they didn't have many disciples, perhaps only a few thousand, they were soul cultivators, and almost no one dared provoke them. The Wind Spirit Pavilion was currently decorated with colorful lanterns and banners, but the atmosphere wasn't very happy. Instead, it was rather grave. That was because today was the day Menki was supposed to be married off to Feng Xiaoyan. Menki was viewed as an immortal fairy in the eyes of the Wind Spirit Pavilion's male disciples. But today, that fairy's soul root was destroyed, making her a cripple. Furthermore, the reason she was being married off to Feng Xiaoyan was something they all knew. All of them felt miserable inside, but although they knew this truth, there was nothing they could do. They could only follow the pavilion master's orders and set up the decorations. Boom. Suddenly, a powerful explosion rocked the wind spirit pavilion and everyone turned pale. A powerful pressure surged over them, making it hard for them to breathe. Feng Xiaozi's bastard father, get the fuck out here. A furious roar shook the land, shaking everyone's hearts. Long Chen and Xu Wuhan were standing in the Wind Spirit Pavilion's plaza. Long Chen had destroyed the Wind Spirit Pavilion's statue with a single slash of his saber. That was what the previous explosion had been. Xu Wuhan had grown two wings and carried Long Chen all the way here. She crossed dozens of miles in a flash, managing to reach the Wind Spirit Pavilion in just an hour. Worried about Men Qi, without even thinking about it, Long Chen had directly caused the greatest commotion possible in order to draw out everyone from the Wind Spirit Pavilion. In any case, Xu Wuhan had come with him. He didn't need to have any misjivings. Following his furious roar, countless experts from the Wind Spirit Pavilion rushed over. Who dares be so impetuous in my Wind Spirit Pavilion? Suddenly, a roar rang out and a terrifying pressure descended. A middle-aged man wearing a crown and yellow robes appeared in front of Long Chen. This man was tall and his aura was unstable, causing the space around him to fluctuate between light and dark. He appeared to be in his 40s. His eyes were gloomy, his lips were very thin, and his chin was pointed. Behind him were also dozens of Xi'anshan experts who were glaring at Long Chen and Xu Wuhan. When this middle-aged man saw Xu Wuhan, a bewildered expression appeared on his face, as he was shocked to find he was unable to sense her aura. You are the Wind Spirit Pavilion Master, asked Long Chen icily. Brazen brat, how dare you be rude to the Pavilion Master, shouted one of the Xi'anshan experts behind the middle-aged man. Split the heavens. Long Chen suddenly summoned his divine ring, his two-star battle armor, and directly attacked. As for the Xi'anshan expert, he hadn't expected him to just immediately launch an attack. He hastily formed hand seals, and a translucent sword light shot out at Long Chen's saber image. Boom. What shocked everyone was that the Xi'anshan expert's sword light was blown apart by Long Chen's saber, and he was blown back, vomiting blood. Xu Wuhan was expressionless, but inside, she was also shocked. Long Chen's full strength attack had already surpassed the bounds of common sense. It contained some kind of unknown energy. This same attack had been able to sever Luo Feng's arm, and Luo Feng had been at the mid Xi'anshan realm. After blowing that expert back, Long Chen didn't look at him any further. He simply pointed his saber at the pavilion master. Hand over Men Qi. So you must be the one who killed my beloved son. Long Chen. Die. The Wind Spirit Pavilion Master finally recovered from his shock and charged at Long Chen. He sent a palm crashing forward, and a spiritual arrow also shot out of his forehead at Long Chen. A snow white palm smashed apart that spiritual arrow and also tightly caught the Pavilion Master's wrist. 
It was Xu Wuhan. Just as the pavilion master was surprised and about to throw her off, another larger hand viciously slapped across his face. The pavilion master spun through the air and vomited a mouthful of blood, as well as a dozen teeth. Bastard. He roared furiously, and a figure rushed straight at Long Chen. Behind that person was a large illusory image. That was a young man who looked similar to Feng Xiao Zi. It was his little brother, Feng Xiaoyan. Seeing his father be humiliated, he immediately charged out and summoned his dreams owl battle armor, wanting to kill Long Chen with spiritual strength. Long Chen snorted and a lightning spear appeared in his hand. He ruthlessly smashed it into the dream Zhao battle armor that Feng Xiaoyan had summoned. That huge dream Zhao battle armor instantly burst under Long Chen's spear. What? Feng Xiaoyan was horrified. Before he even understood what was going on, Long Chen had already slapped him unconscious. With just two slaps, his skin was split open and he was bleeding heavily. As a soul cultivator, his physical body was very weak. If Long Chen hadn't held back, a slap from Long Chen could have easily caused his head to explode. All of that happened too quickly. The Wind Spirit Pavilion Master had only just tried attacking when he was sent flying by a slap from Long Chen. By the time he stabilized, Feng Xiaoyan was already in Long Chen's grasp. He raged. Long Chen, if you dare touch a hair on my son's head, I will tear you into a million pieces. A-H-H. A miserable scream rang out as Long Chen ruthlessly tore off one of Feng Xiaoyan's arms. Please. Continue threatening. Long Chen's hand was already on Feng Xiaoyan's other arm, just waiting for him to say more. Long Chen, the pavilion master clenched his teeth furiously. Don't give me any more of your sheet. Hand over Meng Qi, said Long Chen icily. You dare threaten me. A-H-H. -H. Another arm was viciously torn off Feng Xiaoyan's body. His miserable scream resounded throughout the entire Wind Spirit Pavilion, causing everyone's blood to turn cold. Keep going. Long Chen's hand ended up on one of Feng Xiaoyan's legs. The pavilion master's eyes almost tore out of his face. He was about to go crazy with fury at seeing his son's arms be torn off. Hand over Meng Qi. The pavilion master's chest heaved like a bellow. The killing intent in his eyes had almost taken solid form. But looking at Long Chen's icy eyes, he decided to yield in the end. Go take that slut out of custody. One of the Xi'anshan experts behind him hesitated slightly, exchanging a furtive gaze with the pavilion master before leaving. After a short while, Meng Qi was brought over. Her face was completely pale and gray. Her bright eyes had become much duller, and there were not even the slightest spiritual key fluctuations from her body. Long Chen. Seeing Long Chen, Meng Qi forced out a slight smile. Long Chen's head began to buzz. All of you should die. Long Chen's furious roar shook the heavens. He seemed to have gone crazy, an icy killing intent surging out of him. Long Chen, I've already brought over Meng Qi. Hand over my son. The pavilion master couldn't help becoming a bit afraid at seeing Long Chen become crazy. He was afraid he would instantly kill Feng Xiaoyan. Then his Feng family's bloodline would be severed. Long Chen, stay calm. She's still in enemy's hands. Xu Wuhan lightly placed a hand on Long Chen's back, and a cool aura spread throughout his body suppressing his own aura that was about to go berserk. Fine. Hand over Men Qi. Long Chen clenched his teeth. You release my son first. You don't have a choice. Long Chen glared at the pavilion master, his voice colder than ice. In the end, the pavilion master decided to yield again. There was no way around it, as he only had that one son left. He didn't dare let anything happen to him. That Xi'anshan expert released Men Qi, who immediately collapsed on the ground. Her soul root had been destroyed and she was unable to use her soul energy to control her spiritual key. Her meridians had almost instinctively absorbed the pitiful amount of spiritual key in her body, and from that consumption, she basically had no energy at all. However, she still smiled happily, doing her best to crawl over to Long Chen. That scene broke Long Chen's heart. He immediately pounced forward and pulled her over to his side. Meng Qi leaned against his chest with a contented expression. Her hand gently caressed Long Chen's cheek. Long Chen, I'm happy you came. We won't have to ever part again in the future. Killing intent exploded out of Long Chen. He flung out Feng Xiaoyan, and with a wave of his spiritual strength, a roar shook the entire Wind Spirit Pavilion. Meng Qi, I'll kill all of them as revenge for you. Long Chen roared. Everyone attacked together. The pavilion master caught his son and then handed him off to an elder. Then his spiritual strength erupted, and over ten Xi'anshan experts also attacked with him shooting out countless spiritual arrows at Long Chen. Boom. However, when those arrows were about to reach Long Chen, 
they were all crushed by a barrier of light. Shu Wuhan's hands were still in a hand seal in front of her. Little Snow, prepare yourself. We'll kill them all, shouted Long Chen. Don't Long Chen, cried Men Qi. Why not? Long Chen hastily paused. The Wind Spirit Pavilion has treated me kindly in the past, and my conduct was no different from betrayal. Now that they've treated me like this, I no longer owe them anything. From now on, neither of us owe the other anything. Long Chen, I'm begging you. Just let this matter end here. All right, begged Men Qi. Men Qi, why do you have to be so foolish? They're just a bunch of broods, asked Long Chen. If I'm foolish, then I'm foolish. Long Chen, can you let me be stubborn just this once? I promise, I'll listen to whatever you say in the future, pleaded Men Qi. Long Chen viciously glared at the Wind Spirit Pavilion's people, and then icily said, Today, Men Qi has saved you all. From now on, everyone should mind their own business. If you offend Men Qi again, I swear I will erase your Wind Spirit Pavilion from this world. If you don't want to die, then I'd suggest you get the hell out of the Wind Spirit Pavilion, or don't blame me for being ruthless in the future. The pavilion master's expression was extremely ugly. A junior was actually threatening him like this. All his prestige was lost. Who are you? He asked Shu Wuhan. You don't have the qualifications to know. Right now, Men Qi has left your Wind Spirit Pavilion and is a member of my Zhuanshan Super Monastery. It'll be best for you to stop while you can, said Shu Wuhan. You, you are the Zhuanshan Super Monastery's monastery head. Shu Wuhan snorted, placing one hand on Long Chen and one hand on Men Qi. Her wings trembled and she disappeared from everyone's view, leaving behind only the Wind Spirit Pavilion's people who were gnashing their teeth in fury. Chapter 483 Soul Seed Translator Born to be once Shu Wuhan brought Long Chen and Men Qi to the first monastery. She gave Long Chen a few warnings before leaving. Men Qi's soul root had been destroyed. That was something even she had no way to fix, as Shu Wuhan was not a soul cultivator. Seeing that Long Chen seemed to have many things to do, she let Long Chen decide what he wanted to do about this. When Long Chen arrived in front of everyone, carrying Men Qi on his back, they all clenched their teeth. Men Qi, who had been like an immortal fairy, had now been tormented into her current state. Despite the fact that she was a young woman, the Wind Spirit Pavilion had not held back at all in terms of viciousness. Long Chen set up a residence for Men Qi, and Tang Wan'er also came to help. Once they were set up, she deliberately left to give the two of them time to be alone. Long Chen, I'm already a cripple. Will you not want me anymore? Men Qi leaned against Long Chen, hugging him closely. Do you think that's possible? You're my fianke, and I'll look after you for a lifetime. Long Chen was filled with tenderness as he embraced her soft waist. Men Qi smiled, her smile like a flower blossoming, and her eyes filled with happiness. She caressed Long Chen's cheek. Do you really not hate me even a bit for what I did to you in the Phoenix Cry Empire? She was referring to how she had gone to withdraw from their marriage agreement. Men Qi had always been brooding about that matter. Even just saying that, Men Qi began to cry. Perhaps it was due to losing her cultivation base. But Men Qi's heart had become even weaker now, and her emotions affected her more than usual. Fang Er already explained to me that you were helpless about that. You had no choice, said Long Chen. That's not entirely true. In the beginning, I really did feel a bit of aversion towards this marriage agreement. I'd never seen you before, and I really didn't want to marry a stranger. But then when I joined the Wind Spirit Pavilion, when they learned I had a fiancé, they actually wanted to kill you. At that time, I felt you were completely innocent and didn't want you to be implicated. So before they did anything, I took the initiative to find you. However, then when I saw how difficult your circumstances were in the Phoenix Cry Capital, I really didn't know how I was supposed to say anything. In the end, on Sunset Mountain, I finally heartlessly withdrew from our marriage agreement, but instead of hating me, you actually looked after me, consoling me. Long Chen, why are you such a fool? I hurt you, but you treat me so well. Men Qi tightly clung to Long Chen, bursting into tears. Long Chen also tightly held her, involuntarily feeling a bit proud. Back then, he really had been too brilliant. He had managed to capture Men Qi's heart. When Long Chen did things, he always relied on his feelings. Back when he had first seen Men Qi, he had felt that Men Qi was an extremely kind-hearted woman, and so his methods back then really had been effective. Holding this beautiful woman in his arms, Long Chen was filled with emotion. He didn't feel that his methods had been vile. If you loved a person, then you should love them with your entire being, and you should be willing to do anything for them. 
Who cared about a bit of infamy? You don't need to be worried, Menki. Although your soul root was destroyed, that doesn't necessarily mean there's no way for you to cultivate. Consoled Long Chen, rubbing her back. Menki straightened her body, looking at Long Chen. You want me to walk the ordinary cultivation path? Long Chen shook his head. Of course not. Your body isn't suited to any other cultivation path other than soul cultivation. Even if you tried, your accomplishments would be extremely limited. What I was talking about was to help you rebuild a soul root, reactivating your spiritual strength, and then you can continue being a grand beast tamer. But that's impossible. There's nothing in this world that's impossible. Close your eyes. Long Chen touched his forehead to Men Qi's forehead. His spiritual strength gently circulated and entered her mind sea. The two of their spiritual strengths connected. Within Men Qi's mind sea, the ball of core source key in her body had already scattered. It had been personally destroyed by the Wind Spirit Pavilion Master. Once this source key was destroyed, her mind sea was like a human that had lost consciousness. She lost control over her spiritual strength. As Long Chen poured in his spiritual strength, their minds connected, and through his spiritual strength, Men Qi was able to glance into Long Chen's mind sea. You, your mind sea, how is it so enormous? Men Qi couldn't help being astonished. For ordinary soul cultivators, their mind seas would not be greater than 300 meters wide at the bone forging realm. 600 meters would mark them as a genius. Men Qi was exceptionally talented, and her mind sea was 3,000 meters wide. That was even larger than geniuses like Feng Xiaozi and Feng Xiaoyan, whose mind seas had been vastly improved with greater resources than her. It was precisely because the Wind Spirit Pavilion Master had taken note of Men Qi's talent that he had kept her alive. But Men Qi was astonished to find that Long Chen's mind sea truly was like an ocean and practically boundless. It had to be measured in the hundreds of miles. In comparison, her own mind sea was truly two minute. You saw it. Long Chen smiled slightly. Your body is too weak right now. But once you recover, I will use my spiritual strength to condense a new soul seed for you. Once the soul seed is planted in your mind sea, it will become your new soul root. At that time, you'll quickly recover. And furthermore, you'll reach an even higher level than before. In truth, Long Chen's mind sea had been around the same size as Men Qi's originally. But after merging with the primal chaos bead, his mind sea had explosively grown. And even Long Chen didn't know what was going on. But that would cause immense damage to your soul. Men Qi shook her head. To use your own spiritual strength to condense a soul seed for someone else would come at an immense cost. And there was even danger that your soul root's quality would permanently decline. You're my woman. I can do anything for you. So you don't need to decline. Don't worry. I have a method that will ensure I don't suffer any harm. Said Long Chen. Currently, Long Chen had reached an even deeper understanding of the primal chaos bead. With the primal chaos bead. His body, spiritual key, and soul energy were all being nourished. That was different from ordinary cultivation. The energy the primal chaos bead offered him could transform into any energy he needed and was capable of benefiting his mind, key, and soul. So Long Chen didn't need to worry about his soul degrading. Long Chen, Men Qi looked at Long Chen with tenderness. Long Chen looked back at her. The two of them slowly approached. Their lips touched. Both of them shook as if a bolt of lightning was coursing through their bodies. A tender and blessed feeling filled their hearts. After some unknown time, the two of them finally parted. Men Qi was deeply asleep, and her mouth still held a happy smile. Beautiful beyond compare. Long Chen slowly rested Men Qi on the couch and gently covered her with a blanket. He also placed a pillow under her head for her to sleep comfortably. Seeing that sweet face as it slept, Long Chen was filled with tenderness. Men Qi really had suffered in the past few days. Thinking of the Wind Spirit Pavilion. Killing intent surged within Long Chen's eyes. For them to treat a kind-hearted woman like this, they really were not even human. Don't let me find a chance, or I'll exterminate all of you broods. Men Qi's outer injuries were now healed, but her body had been weakened greatly in the past few days, and she would need to rest. Those days, she had always been filled with terror and nervousness. Now that she relaxed, she slept deeply. She should be recovered by the time she woke up. Long Chen quietly left her room. As soon as he stepped outside, he saw Tang Wan Er standing by the entrance, looking at him oddly. Do you not know how to be embarrassed? After saying that, Tang Wan Er blushed, obviously having guessed what Long Chen had done inside. She had only just finished speaking when an arm wrapped around her waist. She was just about to make a sound, but she didn't. Long Chen was firmly kissing her, all the way until she felt like she was about to faint. 
Only when she began to beat on his chest did he let go. All right, this way no one needs to be embarrassed. Long Chen laughed. Shameless scoundrel. Tang Wan'er was as red as an apple, both embarrassed and angry. Seeing Long Chen smiling at her, she had an urge to dig a hole and bury herself. I'm ignoring you. I'll look after Sister Men Ki. Tang Wan'er couldn't bear Long Chen's teasing gaze and quickly went into Men Ki's room, locking the door firmly. Everyone's adults, so there's no need to be so shy. You should learn from me. Look, I'm not embarrassed at all, teased Long Chen. The door to the room opened a crack, and Tang Wan'er revealed half her face, clenching her teeth. You rotten scoundrel, your skin is thicker than a city's wall. Just wait, I'll definitely report that you bullied me to Sister Men Ki. All right, then I'll just say some person was feeling jealous and unable to bear seeing me kiss another, so she forced me to kiss her as well. Perhaps the angle and strength had some flaws. As a result, being dissatisfied with my technique, she went to someone else to complain. Hey, hey, let's not fight. Long Chen ran away, thinking of how Tang Wan'er had seemed just like a tigress furiously glaring at him. He laughed. At the same time, he couldn't help feeling emotional. This was what life should be, accompanying his brothers to drink every day, along with teasing some beautiful woman. He wouldn't trade such days even for the chance to become a god. Unfortunately, times like these were too rare. He had so much trouble around him. Although Shu Wuhan had said the pill tower didn't have an above-board reason to target him, what about targeting him in secret? Furthermore, he had killed a disciple from the so-called heaven-splitting divine sect he had no idea whether that matter would reach their ears. Not to mention, he had also caused the corrupt path to suffer heavy losses. Their army had almost been entirely annihilated this time. He had no idea what kind of award they were planning on bestowing him. Thinking of these things, Long Chen had a huge headache. Right now, he urgently needed to increase his strength. But first, he had a certain matter that he had to do no matter what. He went straight towards where Zhen Wenlong was staying. Chapter 484 Big Business Translator Born to be within a private room. Long Chen, Zhen Wenlong, and that elder from the Huaian sect were sitting and drinking tea. From Zhen Wenlong's introduction, Long Chen learned that the elder's name was Old Kian. 1. After a simple introduction, Long Chen got straight to the point. Within the secret realm and also now in the monastery, the only reason I was able to avoid disaster was because of Brother Zhen's assistance. I will definitely remember this favor. You're too courteous, Long Chen. In truth, we were simply extras. Even if we hadn't been present, with monastery head Shu, you would have been fine. Zhen Wenlong shook his head. Zhen Wenlong was also a magnanimous person. This time, he had truly been just an extra. Everything had been within Shu Wuhan's control. No matter what, I still owe you. After all, the Huaian sect sacrificed quite a few disciples. That truly makes me ashamed, said Long Chen apologetically. Within the secret realm, dozens of Huaian sect disciples had been killed. That made Long Chen deeply apologetic, as death always brought pain with it. Old Kian, who hadn't said anything up to this point, finally opened his mouth. To do business is to risk danger. Within this world, there is no business that is risk-free. You don't need to feel ashamed. Under little Wenlong's arrangements, the families of those disciples that died will all be looked after. They'll never go cold or hungry. Hearing that, Long Chen felt great reverence for the Huaian sect perhaps they were the sect that valued emotions the most. In other sects, when people died, not only was there no compensation, but even their remains might not necessarily be sent back to their families. The worst thing was that when some disciples died, if their families were too weak, their wealth would be directly snatched by others. In fact, sometimes they would even be killed for their treasures. Compared to those sects, the members of Huaian sect, who only ever spoke of business, were practically saints. Then since you're both businessmen, I won't argue. Let's talk about cooperating. I have some medicinal sprouts I want to get rid of. At the same time, I need to buy a large quantity of medicinal ingredients. I'll need Brother Zheng's help, said Long Chen. As soon as the conversation moved to business, Zheng Wenlong and Old Kian's eyes both lit up. Sitting up straight, Zheng Wenlong asked, How many medicinal sprouts do you have? And what quality and quantity? I have a lot. As for the lower tier or common medicinal ingredients, there's no need to include them, as there's little profit. In terms of the more precious medicinal sprouts I have, or ones that have nearly gone extinct in the world, I have over a hundred. I should be able to offer you a hundred of each of them, said Long Chen. That many, both Zhen Wenlong and Old Kian were shocked. 
Medicinal sprouts were not the same as medicinal ingredients. That term signified that the medicinal ingredients he was referring to were alive. That made them over a thousand times more valuable than regular medicinal ingredients. Furthermore, he said he had over a hundred kinds of them and could offer a hundred of each. That was too shocking. Even they, who commonly did big business, were stunned. You don't need to find it curious. These medicinal ingredients mostly came from plundering. Long Chen laughed. Long Chen was entirely right. Within the secret realm, he had killed countless people. Even just the spatial rings of the top experts made his rewards shocking. Those peak experts were all much prouder, and they didn't keep ordinary items in their spatial rings. Everything they had was the best, and so the medicinal ingredients they had were the best. After those withered ingredients were planted in the primal chaos space, they could be turned into medicinal sprouts. Brothers Hang, you have a life ring, right? Yes, as a businessman, he naturally was prepared. Good, then I will take out the medicinal ingredients one by one for you to register. Saying this, Long Chen began to take out items from his life ring. In truth, that was false. Long Chen was directly summoning them from his primal chaos space. He had no choice but to be careful, as its abilities were too heaven-defying, and he couldn't allow others to learn about it. Amazing. Sevenster Grass. Southern Sky Flower. Nine Leaf Lotus. Old Kyan's eye shined as he watched Long Chen take out precious medicines one after another. These were mostly fifth-tier precious medicines used for refining fifth-tier medicinal pills. Furthermore, just as Long Chen said, these were all mostly extinct in the outside world, let alone living ones. Just dried-up versions were incredibly difficult to find. Long Chen had taken out a total of 107 medicinal ingredients. 93 of them had been fifth-tier ingredients, while 14 of them had been sixth-tier ingredients. Those were used to refine medicinal pills used by Xi'anchen experts. They were absolutely priceless. Some of them were even medicinal ingredients that old Kyan didn't recognize. It was Long Chen who told them what they were, and he would have to go through some ancient records once he got back before selling them. Ha ha ha, big business, definitely big business, laughed old Kyan. Even those wrinkles on his face lessened greatly, making him appear a decade younger. Zhen Wenlong was also ecstatic. Brother Long, if you sell all these medicinal sprouts, you would definitely have enough resources to create your own first-rate power. Long Chen smiled slightly. Then I'll let Brothers Hen handle these things. Don't worry, Brother Long. There definitely won't be any problem. Zhen Wenlong patted himself on the chest, also feeling moved inside. Long Chen was handing this much wealth to him, expressing that he had absolute confidence in him. Speaking of which, we conduct business through spirit stones. So after gradually selling these medicinal ingredients off and deducting the normal service charge, we can send you a large amount of spirit stones, said Zhen Wenlong. That was because in accordance with the business Dao, only rare things had value. If they took out these many medicinal sprouts and sold them all at once, their profits would shrink. They would definitely have to split them up and auction them over time. Furthermore, small auctions didn't have the ability to auction off such precious medicinal sprouts as there was limited purchasing power there, so they definitely needed to come up with a plan first. You don't need to send them here. Keep the money with yourself. Other than that, here's a list. Help me buy the medicinal ingredients on it. You can just directly subtract the cost from the profit of the medicinal sprouts. Once you find them, you can directly send them over, said Long Chen, handing over a list. On that list were many medicinal ingredients. Many of those were ones Zhen Wenlong and Old Kyan had never heard of. As for the ones they did recognize, they caused them to suck in a cold gasp of air. Many of those were items that basically only existed in legends. Very, very few people had ever even seen them. Such things were all astronomically expensive. It was no wonder Long Chen said there was no need to send him spirit stones. As for why Long Chen wanted these medicinal ingredients, they didn't ask. In any case, whether Long Chen was selling or buying, the Huai insect would still get profit. Furthermore, Considering what level of buying and selling Long Chen was planning, their profit would definitely be exceedingly bountiful. That made Zhen Wenlong ecstatic. He had never imagined Long Chen would bring him so much profit this quickly. This way, he was no longer under so much pressure, and he could quickly get a large sum of money to give financial support to the families of the disciples who had died. On the other hand, a large portion of that profit would be his own, and he could use it to buy medicinal pills, cultivation techniques and various other treasures that would increase his own strength. In the Huai insect, there was a certain saying, the amount of wealth you had, 
determined how far you could walk on the cultivation path. The cooperation this time is just the beginning. In the future, there will be many things I'll need Brothers Heng's help with. This is just a small gift for you. You can consider it a bribe. Long Chen laughed. Handing Zhen Wenlong a jade case. Brother Long, you're too courteous. There's no need. What? Zhen Wenlong opened the case and couldn't help letting out a startled cry. Killing fruit. Even old Kyan cried out in shock. The two of them were both businessmen, and their strongest point was their eyesight, the ability to appraise the value of various treasures. The Killin fruit was a heaven-defying treasure capable of upgrading a person's spirit root. It was something they had only seen in ancient records. Brother Long, this is too precious. Zhen Wenlong didn't know what to do. This was something cultivators would dream of obtaining. It was effective on anyone within the Xi'anchen realm. Don't decline, Brother Zhang. Didn't you say the greatest investment a person could make was an emotional investment? Well then, this can be considered my investment in our relationship. This cooperation will also bring me great assistance. And so this is just a symbol of my sincerity, said Long Chen. All right, then I'll accept it. Zhen Wenlong gratefully and very carefully put away the killing fruit. This was a treasure that money could not buy. Once he returned to his sect, he could invite a master alchemist to refine it into a medicinal pill that would bring him endless benefit. After talking a bit longer with the two of them, Zhen Wenlong left behind his address and left with old Kyan. Time was precious to businessmen. Each breath they took was money. It could be said Zhen Wenlong was in a race against time. The Jiuli secret realm had just closed, and many treasures were circulating around now. However, some sects didn't dare reveal their treasures so quickly, afraid others would place their intentions on them. In the past, it was always years before they gradually began to reveal the treasures they had obtained from the secret realm. But this time wasn't the same. The large sects had all suffered immense casualties and were on the verge of going berserk. As for the smaller sects, they had obtained treasures, but they didn't dare reveal them. If Zhen Wenlong didn't use this time properly, he wouldn't get any profit. But then if he didn't know how to use the medicinal sprouts Long Chen had just provided him, he really wouldn't be Zhen Wenlong. However, when he returned, there were many things he needed to set up. For the large enough auctions, they needed a great deal of promotion first in order to draw enough people. These medicinal sprouts would mostly be sold to sects, and those sects all had their own medicinal fields. That was why they would be willing to spend such a large amount on medicinal sprouts. No matter how much they spent, they would get that profit back in a few decades. Then with continual breeding, it would be a continuous flow of profit. After sending them off, a disciple ran over with an extremely grave expression. Senior Apprentice Brother Long Chen. Something's happened to Senior Apprentice Sister Men Qi. Chapter 485,000 Star Devouring Soul Translator. Born to be Long Chen hastily ran back to Men Qi's room. Men Qi was sitting on her bed, a faint black key appearing on her face. Ling Yanzi had a hand on her back, spiritual key curling around him, his head covered with sweat. Long Chen. Tang Wan'er seemed to have found hope and hastily explained. Sister Men Qi was sleeping fine at first, but out of nowhere, her body began to spasm. I don't know what's going on. She's been poisoned. I'm using my spiritual key to suppress the poison, not letting it invade her soul. But her body is too weak. It's extremely taxing for me, explained Ling Yanzi. If it was an ordinary person, Ling Yanzi wouldn't find it so difficult to suppress the poison. But Men Qi's body was too weak and the slightest mistake might cause her body to explode. Not to mention, the poison was too fierce, constantly attacking Ling Yanzi's suppression, making it very hard on him. Long Chen hastily went over and peeled back Men Qi's eyelids. There were countless little specks in her pupils. He quickly pressed onto the Yuz Hen acupuncture point at the back of her head and poured in his powerful spiritual strength. You can't, Ling Yanzi cried out. Long Chen's spiritual strength was bypassing his blockade to charge at the poison. It's fine. This is the thousand star devouring soul poison. Now it will focus on devouring my soul energy instead of attacking Men Qi, explained Long Chen. Now Ling Yanzi saw that as soon as the poison encountered Long Chen's spiritual strength, it was like a hungry wolf that had encountered meat and was crazily devouring it. Sect leader, help me guard her use hen point. I'll expel the poison. Long Chen increased his soul energy. His spiritual strength was like a python swimming in Men Qi's meridians. As for the poison, as soon as it saw the spiritual strength, it crazily pounced on it, biting down and refusing to let go. Long Chen's originally transparent spiritual strength quickly turned black as ink because of the poison. 
He then took out a knife and cut a small opening on Menki's palm. Instantly, pitch black blood flowed out of the opening, emitting a disgusting stench. Everyone, get out. Close the door and get further away from the room. At this time, there were many people that had heard something had happened with Menki and had gathered here. Now they hastily left. This was a spiritual poison and extremely troublesome. When Tang Wan'er and the others saw that black blood, they all felt a chill. Long Chen poured in his spiritual strength three times, finally drawing out all the poison in Men Qi's body. He finally sighed a breath of relief. He summoned a blue flame and incinerated the black blood. The entire room was filled with the disgusting stench. Holding Men Qi, he and Ling Yunzi also left the room. After a moment of hesitation, Long Chen waved his hand and summoned a ball of flames that instantly burned the room to ash. This poison was too intense. Worried about the remnants, he decided the room wasn't worth it. This way was safer. What happened Long Chen? Asked Ling Yunzi. It was the Wind Spirit Pavilion. Killing intent surfaced within Long Chen's eyes. When they had handed Men Qi over back then, they had also poisoned her. If Ling Yunzi hadn't rushed over here fast enough to suppress the poison from reaching her soul, the results would have been too horrible to think of. That God MN Wind Spirit Pavilion. Let's go overturn their bastard lair, Rage Guo ran. Everyone was completely infuriated now. Even though Men Qi had already been crippled and half alive, they still hadn't let her off. They were definitely worse than beasts. Let's go, Long Chen. I'll accompany you to the Wind Spirit Pavilion, said Ling Yunzi, patting Long Chen's shoulder. He was also furious. Let's cut them down. Gu Yang and the others roared furiously. The Wind Spirit Pavilion was truly too hateful. All of you calm down. Right now, we've only just settled in, and it's not suitable for us to make any large movements. Don't always think about slaughter and fighting, as that's not beneficial to you. We should use kindness to subdue our opponents. We'll talk it out reasonably. Long Chen smiled. What? No way. Are you all right, boss? exclaimed Guo Ran. All right, that's enough. Everyone should disperse. Long Chen waved his hand at everyone. With Tang Wan Er, he set up Men Qi in another room. He also gave her a medicinal pill to help recover her physical energy. Then, he stealthily left on his own, changing his clothes. He went down the mountain, but before he got a mile away, he saw Guo Ran and the others had long since been waiting for him. What are you all doing? Being caught red-handed, Long Chen couldn't help being a bit infuriated. He, I was right, wasn't I? Boss, you wanted to go on your own. Guo Ran laughed. Gu Yang said, Boss, how could you want to leave us behind? You don't think we're brothers, Brother Long. For you to go fight without me, does it mean you don't want me any longer? Asked Wild. Hurt. Fuck. What does that have to do with anything? Long Chen was speechless. This time, I'm not going to fight. Not going to fight? Then what are you doing? To talk about your feelings? Who would believe you? Asked Guo Ran. I'm going to get revenge. Then how is that not going to fight? That's not the same. This time, the scale is going to be rather large. And if you went, you wouldn't be able to help. Instead, you'd hold me back, said Long Chen. Are you telling the truth? Asked Guo Ran suspiciously. When have I ever tricked you, boss? What is going on? Guo Ran still didn't understand. Don't ask so many questions. Just hurry up and scram. Just wait for the news. Remember, don't tell anyone I'm leaving. If anyone asks where I am during this time, just say I'm in seclusion, said Long Chen. Hearing how solemn Long Chen was, they knew he was planning something. They hastily nodded. Once Guo Ran, Wild, Song Mingguan, Li Qi, and Gu Yang left, Long Chen couldn't help shaking his head. Now, Long Chen summoned Little Snow, and taking advantage of the darkness of the night, he rushed directly towards the Wind Spirit Pavilion. Within the Wind Spirit Pavilion, there were over ten Xi'anshan elders standing together, not daring to say a single word. In front of them, the pavilion master's expression was exceedingly ugly. Third elder, you're sure you poisoned that slut with the thousand star devouring soul poison? Asked the pavilion master icily. I'm absolutely sure. And I definitely used enough. There definitely wasn't any mistake. The elder who had gone to bring Men Qi out of custody now spoke. His voice extremely silent from fear. Definitely enough? Definitely no mistake? Then tell me, why is that even up to now? Men Qi's soul tablet hasn't broken, roared the pavilion master, pointing towards a jade tablet. The Wind Spirit Pavilion's disciples were all soul cultivators, and all the stronger disciples were made a soul tablet by the Wind Spirit Pavilion. Once the disciple died, that soul tablet would also break, 
No wonder how far apart they were. It was extremely magical. Back when Feng Xiaozi had died in the secret realm, his soul tablet had broken, infuriating the entire Wind Spirit Pavilion. They had moved out in full force to their entrance of the secret realm. As a result, Menki lost any chance of escaping from them when she left the secret realm. Right now, the third elder was clenching his teeth. According to how much poison he had given Menki, she should have already died. However, this jade tablet was still completely fine. If the third elder hadn't followed him for so long, the pavilion master would definitely suspect he had betrayed him. Perhaps Long Chen has some ability to temporarily suppress the poison. But you also know that this poison targets the soul, and there's no medicine that can cure it, said the third elder. The pavilion master nodded. He had a great understanding of just how terrifying the thousand-star devouring soul poison was. It was specialized in targeting soul cultivators. It was a poison that activated slowly. There wasn't any way to sense it at the beginning when a person was poisoned. By the time the poison erupted, it would take a person's life in just a few breaths time. It was only because Men Qi had been lucky that Ling Yanzi had been passing by and had heard Tang Wan'er's cry, thus saving her from death. That was also why the pavilion master suspected the third elder. The thousand star devouring soul poison killed its target almost as soon as the poison activated. There was usually no time to save such a person. HMPH. The Zhuanshan Supermonastery really is intolerable. Their monastery head personally came here. Was it to establish her prestige? Our Wind Spirit Pavilion has been standing for thousands of years, and we aren't so easy to bully. This time, it'll count as giving them a lesson. My Wind Spirit Pavilion isn't something anyone can take advantage of, said the Pavilion Master through clenched teeth. Although the Wind Spirit Pavilion's inheritance didn't stretch back as far as the Zhuanshan Supermonasteries, they were all soul cultivators, making them incredibly powerful. Over these years, there had been practically no one who dared provoke them causing their desires to inflate boundlessly. In fact, they even had some intentions of standing on the same level as the supreme sects. They had been thinking of using Menki and Feng Xiaozi to stand out in the secret realm's righteous and corrupt battle, shocking the seven prefectures, making their Wind Spirit Pavilion's name resound loudly. However, their name didn't resound, and of their two greatest hopes, one had died and one had left, almost driving the Pavilion Master mad. That was why he hated Menki to the bone. If he hadn't cared about her talent, he would have killed her. But after crippling her soul root, all her soul energy would rest within her mind sea and would be passed on to the next generation. That had been his extremely malicious thoughts. But before he could implement this plan, Long Chen had destroyed their Feng family's ancestral statue, almost cutting down the entire Wind Spirit Pavilion and had almost ended up killing his other son. The Pavilion Master had only had two sons. Feng Xiaoyan's battle strength was just slightly inferior to his big brother's, making him extremely strong. However, the Jiuli secret realm was extremely dangerous, and it was possible for anyone to die. The pavilion master hadn't wanted to place all his eggs in the same basket, as that was dangerous. It had been precisely because he had been smart that he had managed to protect his Feng family's bloodline back then. Now, he was just glaring at the jade tablet in front of him, waiting for it to shatter. They didn't know that as they all stared at this jade tablet, a death god was stealthily approaching their wind spirit pavilion. Long Chen looked at the wind spirit pavilion's buildings from a distance. He suddenly waved a hand, and a huge blue ball appeared. Little Snow, prepare yourself. Our target is that plaza in the center. We'll raise the wind spirit pavilion to the ground. Little Snow roared and spat out a huge ball of wind blades. It wrapped around Long Chen's flame ball. It was like a shooting star as it went flying straight towards the center of the Wind Spirit Pavilion. Chapter 486 Raising Down the Wind Spirit Pavilion Translator Born to be Boom A huge sphere 300 meters in diameter landed in the central plaza of the Wind Spirit Pavilion, causing a heaven-shaking explosion. Countless blazing wind blades shot out, an apocalyptic scene that spread in all directions. It was possible to see hundreds of people sticking their heads out of buildings. But when they saw that wave of blazing wind blades, they all despaired. Those huge buildings were directly crushed to smithereens and then burned to ashes. Countless screams rose and fell. Some tried to flee, but they were still devoured by that wave and instantly annihilated. This one wind and flame technique instantly destroyed the majority of the wind spirit pavilion. There was a bottomless hole at the center a hundred miles wide. Everything around it was a complete mess. Bastard, who dares attack my wind spirit pavilion? I'll tear you to pieces. A hysterical roar rang out, and the land split open. 
A group of people came flying out of a collapsed building, the person at the front being the pavilion master. When he flew out and saw the scene around him, he directly coughed up a mouthful of blood, his eyes filled with icy killing intent. Long Chen's attack had destroyed the base of the Wind Spirit Pavilion, one that had been standing for millennia. At the same time, he had also severed their inheritance. Each sect had two things that were built as soon as they were founded. One was the ancestral statue, that was normally a statue of the first generation founder. That statue could not be destroyed, because the statue's longevity was a symbol of how long the sect had survived. The second thing was the main palace hall, as marks of a sect's inheritance. Those two were the most important things to a sect previously. That ancestral statue had already been destroyed by Long Chen. And now, the palace hall had been crushed to smithereens by him. Even when large sects fought, no one dared do such a thing. That was because that was an enmity where there was no rest until death. Seeing that his wind spirit pavilion had been destroyed, the pavilion master's eyes turned scarlet, and his hair stood on end. From the ground and the collapsed buildings, there were quite a few people crawling out of the rubble. Looking around vacantly, they didn't dare believe that what they were seeing was real. Their plaza had already disappeared to become a pit. The surroundings were a complete mess. It was unknown just how many members of the Wind Spirit Pavilion had been killed by this one attack. It's Long Chen. Someone let out a cry as he saw a man standing dozens of miles away. His hands clasped behind his back. A slight smile on his face. He waved his hands to them as if he was greeting old friends. Kill him. The pavilion master roared furiously and he immediately shot forward. Following him, everyone who was still alive charged. Surprisingly, they still had over 2,000 experts. What was strange to them was Long Chen was still standing there with his hands clasped behind his back, still wearing a faint smile. It seemed he had no intention of fleeing. They all surrounded him, but Long Chen still didn't move. He just lightly looked at the pavilion master, not saying anything. It was you who destroyed my wind spirit pavilion demanded the pavilion master through clenched teeth. Yes, nodded Long Chen. How do you want to die? I'll let you choose. As he said this, his eyes scanned the surroundings. You don't need to look. Today, I came alone to settle our debts. It was you who had men key poisoned. Correct. The pavilion master's eyes narrowed slightly, and he icily said, as expected, that slot didn't die. Have you come to get the antidote? Keep dreaming. Today, I'll kill you in the most horrible way imaginable. Novaloon.com idiot, I didn't come for the antidote, I came for your lives, said Long Chen disdainfully, ha ha ha, good, then let me see just how you'll take my life, today, if I let you flee, I, Fen Yeoli, will change my surname to yours, the pavilion master actually laughed in his fury, I, Long Chen, wouldn't have an idiot son like you, Long Chen shook his head, appearing disgusted, courting death, one of the elders, who had long since grown impatient, was just about to attack. Wait a moment. Long Chen hastily raised his hand. What? Are you afraid now? It's too late for that. Sneered the pavilion master. Don't you all want to say some words? Asked Long Chen. What are you talking about? Asked the pavilion master. Well, if you don't say anything before you die, you won't have a chance afterward. Long Chen pointed up to the sky. Idiot. Who are you trying to fool with your childish tricks? Sneered the pavilion master. Pavilion master. Look, the elder beside him was filled with horror, his voice quivering with terror. What is it? The pavilion master finally looked up. He became completely appalled. At some unknown time, the entire sky had become covered with black clouds. A region of 10,000 miles had become a vortex. That vortex was still forming, and countless flickers of light appeared in the clouds, looking like shining dragons swimming through the darkness. At the same time, a terrifying pressure now descended upon them. Everyone's hearts quivered. The center of this vortex was them. These. These are tribulation clouds. But won't there only be tribulation clouds once you step into the Xi'anchen realm? And the scope wouldn't surpass 300 meters. Pavilion master. You're about to undergo your tribulation. Cried an elder. That's fucking impossible. I've only just reached the late Xi'anchen realm. My tribulation is still several decades off. This isn't my tribulation lightning. Cursed the pavilion master. Then whose is it? After saying that, this elder involuntarily looked towards Long Chen. He saw Long Chen nod back. Yes, it's mine. None of you should fight over the tribulation with me. Run. Someone finally reacted. Who cared whose tribulation it was? Once the lightning tribulation descended, all of them would have to undergo the tribulation together. Furthermore, 
that tribulation would set its intensity based on the highest person's cultivation base. If they all underwent tribulation together, the tribulation would be set to the Xi'anshan realm, and everyone below that realm would all suffer. It's too late. Long Chen laughed. His divine ring appeared behind him, and a berserk aura soared into the clouds. He had already reached the great circle of the 12th heaven stage of tendon transformation. He was attacking the 13th heaven stage. Only once he reached the 13th heaven stage would he completely transform and enter the bone forging realm. These 13 heaven stages were the most peculiar aspect of the 9 star hegemon body art. Originally, Long Chen had touched upon the barrier yesterday and had been preparing on handling everything urgent before finding a secluded place to undergo his tribulation. But in this world, there really were many people enthusiastic to help you find good locations. In fact, some people would be so kind as to lend their home for you to undergo your tribulation. This time, the Wind Spirit Pavilion had truly touched upon Long Chen's taboos. Furthermore, last time when he had left, he had already warned the Wind Spirit Pavilion's disciples to leave. As for whether or not they had, it wasn't something he cared about anymore. Now he no longer had to have any misjivings. He directly broke through that final shackle, entering the 13th Heaven stage. As soon as he fully reached the 13th Heaven stage, the slowly revolving tribulation clouds in the sky came to a pause. Then, with a sudden rumble, countless thunderbolts rained down. A terrifying pressure made it so even the air exploded, and those people fleeing felt as if space had suddenly frozen around them, making it so they couldn't move. No, miserable screams of despair rang out. Unable to block the lightning's merciless descent, everyone below the Xi'anshan realm instantly exploded. This lightning was simply not something people on their level could block. A single attack killed thousands. Only the Xi'anshan experts were capable of circulating their spiritual strength to defend. They had a spiritual light barrier around them. The lightning had struck that barrier, destroying it, causing them to vomit a mouthful of blood. However, that allowed them to block the lightning, saving their lives. Unfortunately, the thunderbolts were like drops of rain. It was not just one wave. As a result, all those Xi'anshan experts repeatedly vomited blood. They continuously summoned barriers of light, attempting to survive. Dozens of them vomited blood in unison, an extremely spectacular sight. They wanted to run, but the thunder force had locked them down, making it so they couldn't move. They could only forcibly block. Even the pavilion master vomited a mouthful of blood after several attacks. Within the reign of lightning, only Long Chen was looking at them oddly, wondering to himself, why isn't the lightning tribulation as strong as last time? When this lightning landed on his body, he barely even felt it, seeing that made the pavilion master almost die from rage. Finally, an elder ended up being too slow to raise his barrier and was instantly blasted into smithereens from a bolt of lightning. The fatal weakness of soul cultivators was their physical bodies. Even though they had reached the Xi'anshan realm, their bodies were not even as strong as the bodies of ordinary bone-forging disciples. Furthermore, that elder's death caused all the other elders to despair. They looked up at the tribulation clouds and saw there wasn't even the slightest sign of them scattering. A-H-H. -H. Miserable screams rose and fell. Those elders were killed one by one. The pavilion master's heart trembled, his blood turning cold. Long Chen, even if I have to die, you'll still die first. The pavilion master roared, and his spiritual strength erupted. The world darkened as a figure appeared in the sky. It was a huge flying magical beast. As soon as it appeared, it let out a miserable cry. Its body was too large, and it was instantly struck by countless thunderbolts and killed. From the pressure coming from it, it should have been a Xi'anshan magical beast. Although it had been killed, it had still managed to block the thunderbolts from reaching the pavilion master, who now charged at Long Chen. Die. A spiritual blade appeared in his hand, and he slashed it down on Long Chen. That spiritual blade had countless runes revolving around it that emitted a terrifying pressure. Long Chen didn't dare take it head on and he hastily threw himself to the side. The spiritual blade missed. Furthermore, the magical beast's corpse also fell now. The pavilion master roared. You can still move. PFFT. A huge bolt of lightning struck the pavilion master's body. A generation's expert died just like that. It was this simple. Long Chen almost felt this was hard to believe. Such a powerful person had practically been an ant in the face of this thunder force. He, looks like I've really profited this time. Good. I won't have to suffer, Long Chen rejoiced. Surprisingly, the tribulation was extremely weak this time. Rumble. When the pavilion master died, a heaven-shaking rumble suddenly came from the sky. 
and a boundless aura locked Long Chen in place. What? Long Chen's expression instantly changed. Chapter 487 Lightning Python Translator Born to be once everyone else was killed. The tribulation clouds began to churn intensely, and countless bolts of lightning gathered. What? That was just a warm-up? Now it's serious. Long Chen's expression involuntarily changed. Originally, he had thought he had gotten a lucky break and would pass this tribulation easily. But now he realized just how excessively wrong he had been. Those thunderbolts had just been the prelude before the tempest. This was the real lightning tribulation. Long Chen had an urge to curse over and over again. That previous intensity had been able to annihilate Xi'anchen experts. Just how powerful did his lightning tribulation have to be? What he didn't realize right now was that soul cultivators' physical bodies were just too weak. Their own tribulation lightning was the weakest of all tribulations. If their own tribulations were on the same level as other cultivators, then this world wouldn't have any soul cultivators. Life was fair. Soul cultivators possessed abnormal spiritual strength, but their weak physical bodies were their fatal weak point. The heavenly deos had taken into consideration that soul cultivators' tribulation lightning couldn't be very strong. But that weak lightning tribulation, which had just been a warm-up, had still been something they hadn't been able to bear. Long Chen had even been celebrating, thinking he had ended up benefiting because of the pavilion master. The tribulation lightning had been adjusted to his level. But as soon as he was killed, the tribulation lightning changed, going from a kitten to a fierce tiger. Fuck. Fine. Come at me. I just knew you would try to make life difficult for me. I'm already used to it. Long Chen roared up to the sky. This was already his third tribulation. Each time, his tribulation was filled with endless destructive will. That was completely different from other people's tribulations. For other people, the tribulation was just a trial. But Long Chen's tribulation only had one goal, and that was using its full strength to kill him. Boom. A thick bolt of lightning descended from the nine heavens. This thick bolt of lightning enveloped Long Chen and dozens of meters around him. His clothes burst apart and a berserk energy spread in all directions, with Long Chen at the center. Rumble. The ground seemed like water, and a huge ripple spread because of the terrifying energy. Where that ripple passed, whether it was mountains of buildings, they were instantly destroyed. That berserk energy truly leveled the Wind Spirit Pavilion. Any remnants that had survived Long Chen's combination attack with Little Snow were now instantly destroyed. As for Long Chen, within that thick bolt of lightning, his skin was splitting apart, blood pouring out. Even with his physical body, he wasn't able to endure this fierce attack. Just the first attack was enough to injure him. Fuck. Just keep coming. You got em and bastard heavens. If you think I'm displeasing, then come smite me, roared Long Chen crazily. The pain had stepped on his nerves, causing his fury to soar. There are so many bad people in this world, but you don't smite them. Instead, you come to target me. When did I ever provoke you? Although Heavenly Tribulation didn't have any emotions, Long Chen could sense its will. It wanted to completely annihilate him, refusing to allow him to exist in this world. That was a kind of Heavenly Deo, a kind of law. It was a will that could not be defied. It wanted Long Chen dead, so he shouldn't even think about living in this world. That infuriated Long Chen. Boom, boom, boom. As if it had been provoked, the lightning crashed down even harder. The entire world trembled. The might of the heavens could not be opposed. Long Chen coughed up a mouthful of blood. His injuries had reached the point that it was almost possible to see his bones. But Long Chen still clenched his teeth and laughed crazily. Keep coming. You idiot heavens. You blind ass heavens. You. Boom. The thunder force made Long Chen cough up even more blood. However, he wasn't afraid. He was focused entirely on using his own thunder force to devour the thunder force invading his body. Long Chen possessed his own thunder force. Thunder Force that had also come from Tribulation Lightning. However, there was a qualitative difference between it and the current Thunder Force attacking him. The power difference was immense. He needed to devour this attacking Thunder Force bit by bit, gradually increasing the strength of his own Thunder Force. It was like a tiger cub trying to devour an elephant ten times its size. It was extremely difficult, but he was gratified to find his original Thunder Force was extremely voracious. No matter how much he fed it, it still didn't get full. Furthermore, as he fed it, it continuously grew larger. Within Long Chen's blood, countless violet runes were beginning to grow. Those were his core Thunder Force runes, and as he devoured more and more Thunder Force, they also continuously grew stronger. Now, Long Chen didn't need to deliberately feed them. 
they would just automatically devour the thunder force that invaded his body. He was covered in blood, but he didn't stop cursing. In fact, he began to curse even louder. Since he wasn't able to reach and hit the heavens, the best thing was to get some satisfaction from his mouth noveloon.com however, he was actually cheering inside. His thunder force was growing stronger and stronger, something he urgently wished for. Thunder force was very rare and was capable of blocking spiritual strength. It was his greatest trump card when he ran into soul cultivators. After all, soul items were outer forces, and it was much more reliable to use his own strength. So Thunder Force was something he urgently needed. Unfortunately, he was always too busy and had no time to use his spiritual key to nourish his Thunder Force. So this lightning tribulation was also an opportunity for him. Although he rarely used Thunder Force, that was only because he didn't have any high-class battle skills that could control Thunder Force. As for the lightning finger he had come up with, it was only useful against some experts. But against supreme experts, it was useless. The time it took to activate was too long, and true experts would see through that opening in a glance. So although he didn't use his Thunder Force often, it didn't mean that Thunder Force was useless. It was simply that he didn't have any good ways of using it. However, Long Chen still wanted to raise it. After all, there were still many chances for him to obtain higher class battle skills in the future, but chances to increase his Thunder Force were rare. In order to not waste this chance, he could only bitterly endure this pain not using his spiritual key to block. Another benefit of doing this was that it would temper his physical body. However, this method was extremely crazy and cruel. It was a good thing for him that he had been able to continuously use his old Thunder Force to temper his body, because his Thunder Force runes existed in his blood. Even if he didn't deliberately activate them, they would help strengthen his body gradually, expelling impurities from his body. Otherwise, he wouldn't possess such a strong physical body now. Unfortunately, Long Chen hadn't had any time to deliberately temper his body, and so there were still many impurities in his body. Those impurities couldn't be expelled by his passive Thunder Force tempering. They would have required Long Chen to circulate his Thunder Force to its full strength to be expelled. Although Long Chen appeared in a terrible plight right now, he was actually borrowing this Berserk Thunder Force to expel the impurities in his body. This tribulation lightning was of great help to him. However, that didn't mean the lightning tribulation had good intentions towards him. These results were because of Long Chen's own hard work. If he hadn't found a way to nourish Thunder Force in his own body, then he probably would have long since died to tribulation lightning. Boom. Long Chen once more coughed up a mouthful of blood. The bones in his shoulder were now visible. Furthermore, the tribulation clouds in the sky suddenly shrunk into a ball. The tribulation clouds of 10,000 miles shrunk to less than 100 miles. Once the tribulation clouds gathered together, the world immediately became quiet. Heaven and earth were deathly silent. It was as if time had frozen. Long Chen suddenly felt all his hair stand on end. An intense sensation of death enveloped him. I just knew it wouldn't be this easy. Long Chen viciously spat on the ground. His two stars circulated, and from his primal chaos space, a pure life energy poured into his body. His horrifying wounds healed in just a breath's time. However, the price was that the forest of trees in his primal chaos space withered. Long Chen had already planted a forest in his primal chaos space, which he used as storage for life energy. They were what he relied on to heal himself. But he hadn't expected that in order to completely recover, the entire forest would die. All their life energy had been used up. What he didn't know was just what terrifying realm his physical body had reached. Even a small cut on his body required a huge amount of life energy to heal. As for just now, his entire body had been covered in wounds. He had been fortunate he had planted enough trees, or he wouldn't have even been able to fully recover. This was not within his expectations. Other than the medicinal field, he had filled the entire primal chaos space with trees. He had thought that with that many trees, he would be able to instantly recover several times. But now, he had run out after just one healing. But he also couldn't care about that too much at this time. He looked up at the lightning clouds in the sky. A terrifying pressure was locking onto him. Rumble. The tribulation clouds were constantly trembling, as flickering lightning lit up the world. Suddenly, two huge lightning pythons shot out of the clouds. Those lightning pythons seemed to be living creatures. They were 3,000 meters long, and a terrifying pressure came from their bodies. They let out fierce roars as they charged at Long Chen. Fuck. What kind of monsters are these? Long Chen's heart trembled. He sensed immense pressure from these lightning pythons. 
The lightning had somehow transformed. A huge lightning blade appeared in his hand as he closely stared at the two lightning pythons. Chapter 488 Narrowly Surviving Translator Born to be Rumble As soon as the two lightning pythons emerged from the tribulation clouds, heaven and earth began to rumble. Most terrifying of all, the two lightning pythons suddenly intertwined together, and an even stronger pressure descended, causing Long Chen's hair to stand on end. As those huge pythons twisted around each other, a destructive aura attacked Long Chen. His expression completely changed. This attack was practically world-shaking, capable of exterminating all life. With a furious roar, two stars appeared in his eyes, his divine ring shining behind him. A 300-meter lightning blade appeared in his hands. At this time, he had condensed all his thunder force and energy into this blade. He no longer had the luxury to hold back. This lightning tribulation was trying to annihilate him. Split the heavens. Brilliant light exploded from his lightning blade. It ferociously hacked into the two intertwining lightning pythons. Boom. Heaven and earth shook. Light lit up the entire sky. Every mountain within thousands of miles was turned to dust. The tribulation clouds in the sky faded. The ground was a complete mess. And a remnant destructive aura was still present. The soil bulged. And a chaired black hand broke out of the ground. Long Chen vomited a mouthful of blood as well as some broken bits of his organs. That final attack had almost killed him. Now, he was a few breaths off from death. His entire body was chaired black, as that final attack had been too terrifying. It had instantly broken through his defenses, almost destroying his body. His insides had already been destroyed, and his body was like a cracked porcelain jar. Pieces of his skin were constantly falling to the ground, revealing his flesh. My injuries are too heavy. Long Chen looked inside himself. That final attack had been too vicious. Even his bones were all covered with cracks. He might completely collapse at any moment. But the first thing I need to do is get away from here. Clenching his teeth. All the medicinal ingredients in his primal chaos space withered. And a dense life energy poured into his body. Although that wasn't as much life energy as had been in the trees. It was enough to make sure he wouldn't immediately die. Clenching his teeth. He began to run into the distance with his broken body. He had to leave as soon as possible so others wouldn't notice him. Not an hour after he had left, a large number of people appeared where the Wind Spirit Pavilion had been. Those were the experts from the neighboring sects. But what they saw was that a chaired land had replaced the Wind Spirit Pavilion. They were all stunned. Did the heavens bring down divine punishment on them? They never would have imagined that this was just the result from a cultivator's tribulation and just the tribulation of a tendon transformation rookie. As for Long Chen, he was pushing his spiritual strength to its max to avoid others. If it wasn't for the life energy from the medicinal ingredients supporting him, he would really have died this time. With his insides completely destroyed, even medicinal pills had no effect on him. At best, they could keep him alive. However, there was no way they could heal his heavy injuries. Only after rushing far away enough did he summon Little Snow. Jumping onto his back, they fled into the distance. Because of the battle in the secret realm, too many people would recognize Little Snow. If he had summoned Little Snow at the beginning and someone had noticed him, it would be all too easy to suspect it was him. By pushing his spiritual strength and spreading his divine sense to a constant hundred miles, he was fortunate enough to not run into any experts. It was three days later when Long Chen took advantage of the darkness to slip into the first monastery. When Guo Ran and the others saw his current state, they almost died from fright. They almost didn't recognize him. Once he saw Guo Ran, Long Chen couldn't hold on any longer and fainted. These three days, Long Chen had continuously pushed himself to keep going Novaloon.com The life energy from the primal chaos space had only been able to keep him just barely alive. It hadn't been enough to heal him. So he needed a place to rest and heal. And the best option was to stealthily slip into the first monastery. Guo Ran and the others still didn't know what had happened. But Long Chen had told them to keep everything secret. So they hastily brought him to his room severely warning any disciples they encountered to keep their mouths shut. Even Ling Yunzi jumped in fright upon seeing Long Chen's current state. His injuries were absolutely appalling. His entire body was chaired black, and his flesh was almost falling from his bones. Tang Wan Er was so frightened she cried. Guo Ran and the others didn't know what to say. This was their first time seeing Long Chen in such a miserable state. Who did this? Asked Gu Yang, clenching his teeth. Don't get any crazy thoughts. That destructive aura on his body is not something a human is able to cause. Ling Yunzi immediately saw through some clues from Long Chen's state. After all, 
Only he and Tu Fang were aware Long Chen was a divergent. However, he had never imagined Long Chen would have to go through lightning tribulation so soon. He was unaware that this wasn't the first tribulation for Long Chen, but the third. Ordinary people would only have to go through the baptism of heavenly tribulation once they reached the Xianchen realm. That baptism would transform their Haoshan Qi into Xianchen Qi. The legend said divergents would all suffer lightning tribulation when entering the meridian opening realm. The heavens wanted them dead before they could reach the Xianchen realm. For Long Chen to undergo lightning tribulation just for the bone forging realm toppled Ling Yunzi's understanding. Sect leader, will boss be all right? Asked Guo Ran worriedly. Don't worry, there's still a trace of vitality in his body. However, his outer injuries are too severe. The light. Cough. His injuries aren't light, and so he's unable to activate his own body's healing abilities. I'll use Xianchen power to help him activate the life energy within his physical body. He should recover quickly, said Ling Yunzi. Hearing that, everyone sighed a breath of relief. In order to allow Ling Yunzi to heal Long Chen, they all withdrew. Once they left, Ling Yunzi's expression became incomparably grave. In truth, the destructive aura in Long Chen's body was something that even made him tremble. That was a reverence that came from the depths of his soul. Is this an opportunity the heavens have bestowed upon me? Ling Yunzi muttered to himself, looking at Long Chen lying on a bed. His injuries were incredibly severe, and although he was still alive, the destructive aura was continuously breaking down his body, making it so he couldn't recover. Back then, Long Chen had underestimated the lightning tribulation, or perhaps it would be more accurate to say he had underestimated the lightning tribulation's destructive aura. If this continued, then it wouldn't be long before he died to it. Such an energy had surpassed Long Chen's limits. That was why Long Chen had rushed to the first monastery when he had realized this problem. He knew Ling Yunzi had the ability to save him. With Ling Yunzi's Xianchen power and his sword Dao Will, he should be able to expel the remnant destructive aura within his body. However, Ling Yunzi was now hesitating. He didn't act according to how Long Chen had anticipated. Instead, he extended a hand, touching the destructive aura with his Xianchen power and will. That destructive aura only had a desire to destroy. Ling Yunzi's sword Dao Will was essentially provoking it. It suddenly ferociously attacked him, almost instinctively. His sword Dao will raised a powerful defense to block the encroachment of the destructive aura. Ling Yunzi had a complicated expression as he pondered a difficult problem. In the end, he clenched his teeth and released his defenses, allowing that destructive will to attack his mind. He collapsed on the ground, unconscious. Now that Ling Yunzi had absorbed the destructive aura attacking Long Chen, Long Chen's body's instinctive healing abilities activated. After some unknown time, Ling Yunzi opened his eyes. I'm still alive. Looks like I won the gamble. He smiled slightly and stood up. He looked over Long Chen and saw a portion of his black skin had already fallen off to reveal the new skin beneath. Shockingly, Long Chen's body possessed a vast vitality, one that was even more terrifying than a magical beast's. What a terrifying physical body. This physical body is already on the level of a Xianchen expert. Ling Yunzi couldn't help being shocked as he appraised one of Long Chen's arms. According to the legends, Divergents would encounter annihilation lightning tribulations and would always eventually die to one. But once they passed the lightning tribulation, their benefits were also dozens of times greater than other people. Long Chen's current terrifying physical body was the best proof of that. By the time Ling Yunzi left the room, Tang Wanur, Men Qi, and the others were all anxiously waiting. He smiled slightly, reassuring them and saying they could enter. They delightedly charged in to take a look, seeing Long Chen sleeping peacefully. He was snoring, his heart beating powerfully, a stark contrast from his previous self that seemed like he would breathe his last breath at any moment. However, Ling Yunzi told them not to disturb him right now. Long Chen had suffered a spiritual blow, and his soul was slightly damaged. They should let him sleep until he naturally awoke on his own. They carefully left his room, all feeling much more relieved. Tang Wanur still had Men Qi to take care of. As for Guo Ran, Gu Yang, and the others. They took turns guarding Long Chen's door, not letting anyone disturb him. They had asked how Long Chen had ended up injured, but Ling Yunzi harshly warned them not to ask again. That was for their own benefit. That reason was odd, but if Ling Yunzi refused to say, they could only drop it. They would never have imagined that Long Chen's injuries weren't from a person, but from the heavens. What would they do even if Ling Yunzi told them? Would they go demand justice from the heavens? Furthermore, for them to learn Long Chen was a divergent was not a good thing. It was best to conceal this matter. 
The day after Long Chen returned to the monastery, a piece of news spread that shook all of Su Prefecture. The Wind Spirit Pavilion had disappeared. Chapter 489 A Few Things to Tell You Translator Born to be your aura has grown slightly again. Furthermore, I can sense you should have found the key. Try and grow up faster. A voice reverberated throughout endless darkness. Who are you? Why are you constantly rushing me? Long Chen couldn't help but roar upon once more hearing this familiar voice. However, for some unknown reason, his voice was devoured by the darkness. Even he was unable to hear his own voice. I can't hear you. You're still too weak. Only when you grow can I barely feel you within the ten planar worlds. Furthermore, that feeling is quickly growing weaker. Master of the Nine Star Hegemon Body, hurry and grow up. You don't have much time to waste. Who are you? Long Chen roared furiously and then suddenly sat up, covered with sweat. Long Chen. Tang Wan Er cried out with shock and then hastily rushed over to support him. What is it? Long Chen. Are you all right? You're covered with sweat. I'm fine. It was just a dream. Long Chen shook his head, but he felt as if a boulder was crushing his heart. That was definitely no dream, but a voice that managed to pass through boundless space to reach him. However, some unknown energy was blocking him from communicating with that voice. That mysterious voice had said he was the master of the nine star hegemon body, as well as something about the ten planar worlds, as well as some key, that completely befuddled him. The urgency contained in that voice made him extremely uneasy. Just what secrets were behind the nine star hegemon body art? He felt as if he was involved in some immense game. That voice had already rung in his head multiple times, and he was already completely familiar with it. It was definitely the same voice and fluctuations that spoke to him. However, more accurately, that voice was like a spiritual fluctuation, and he was unable to tell if it was male or female, young or old. Are you sure you're all right? Tang wan -er was a bit worried upon seeing how grave Long Chen's expression was. Long Chen took a deep breath and temporarily put aside the matter. Food had to be eaten mouthful by mouthful. A road had to be walked step by step. There was no use in rushing. I'm fine. In fact, I feel full of energy. Long Chen smiled. Looking within himself, he saw that after undergoing the lightning tribulation, his physical body had grown even stronger. There was also faint jade-like luster over his bones. That was a sign he had entered the bone-forging realm. After entering the bone-forging realm, a person's bones would begin hardening, becoming harder than steel. Furthermore, the bones would become a separate reservoir of spiritual key. That spiritual key was compressed to an even greater degree and could be released to activate an even greater power. However, the tribulation this time had been far too dangerous, and even now he felt some lingering fear. He had almost died to the lightning tribulation's final blow. That made alarm bells go off in his head. If he wanted to pass his lightning tribulations, then he had to make his body reach its strongest possible state before undergoing it, or next time, he would very likely lose his life. In truth, if Long Chen had fully activated his thunder force to undergo a body tempering before his tribulation, then at the very least, he wouldn't have been forced into such a miserable state. However, there had been too many things that had occurred almost successively, which hadn't given him any time to breathe. This time, it really had been too close. He definitely didn't want to have to undergo that a second time. What happened? Long Chen, who injured you? We asked the sect leader, but he refused to say. Asked Tang Wan Er. Wan Er, you're becoming more and more beautiful. Long Chen smiled, raising a hand to gently caress her beautiful face. How dislikable. Do you have to change the subject so obviously? Tang Wan Er blushed and pushed aside Long Chen's hand. However, Long Chen didn't want them to know the truth. At the same time, he didn't want to lie to them. Wan Er, trust me, there's a reason I don't tell you. Which one of us doesn't trust you? Wait a moment, I'll help you wash your face. You're filthy right now, laughed Tang Wan Er, bringing a washcloth to gently wipe Long Chen's face. Long Chen obediently enjoyed Tang Wan Er's attention his heart filled with warmth. He smiled. What are you smiling about? After wiping his face twice, Tang Wan Er went to clean the washcloth, taking advantage of that opportunity to ask him why he's smiling so mischievously. If I tell you, will I be beaten? Probed Long Chen. Why would I beat you? Tell me, I feel like today, you really are like a woman. Aya. As soon as he said it, a washcloth landed on his face. Tang Wan Er rebuked. So you're saying I wasn't like a woman before? Well then, you can clean yourself. By the time Long Chen had taken off the washcloth, Tang Wan Er had already left. Long Chen couldn't help but smile. 
He knew Tang Wan'er wasn't actually angry. The two of them were used to bickering, and this was just their style of communication. He wiped his face, wiping off a whole layer of skin. However, the new skin beneath the dead skin was much more durable. He, now let's see how you pinch me now, laughed Long Chen. His body was stronger than ever. His face's skin was something impervious to blade or spear. Just as he finished cleaning himself and changing his clothes, the sound of footsteps came from outside his door. Tang Wan'er helped Men Qi walk inside. Long Chen, cried Men Qi. Men Qi was currently wearing an azure dress, and her long hair fell naturally, even without wearing any cosmetic products. She was still incredibly beautiful. However, her face was a bit paler than usual, and she no longer seemed to possess as much vigor as before. Do you feel any better, Men Qi? Long Chen hastily jumped forward and helped Men Qi sit. Although he had expelled her poison, her body was too weak. Right now, she was an ordinary mortal with a weak body. Just moving was taxing on her. One er stays by my side all day, making me good food and helping me to recover. I'm already much better than before, Tang Wan Er said. But of course, Men Qi and I are closer than real sisters. We aren't like certain people that are so busy every day that they don't have any time to visit. Although Tang Wan Er did have some intent to make things hard on Long Chen. Long Chen could hear that she was warning him that Men Qi was unaware of his injury. Most likely, she had been afraid Men Qi would become worried, which would have been detrimental to her already unstable health. Long Chen couldn't help smiling and stealthily giving Tang Wan Er a thumbs up. Wan Er, don't blame Long Chen. After all, he has so many things to handle, many of which are for all of us. He doesn't have it easy. Men Qi smiled, exonerating Long Chen. Long Chen couldn't help being moved. Men Qi truly had a heart of gold, always thinking of other people. She was truly too kind-hearted. However, Long Chen decided to keep the matter of him destroying the Wind Spirit Pavilion to himself. He definitely didn't want her to know that, or with her character, she might feel a bit guilty. In any case, no one had actually seen him do it, and he felt he hadn't left behind any absolute evidence. Other than himself, anyone that had witnessed it was in another world now. As for himself, he would just refuse to admit anything no matter what. Men Qi, let me examine your body. Long Chen gently held her hand, sending his spiritual strength into her body. He saw that her meridians were in a withered state now. Most likely, her meridians had already sucked up all her spiritual key and had entered a stagnant state. Your body doesn't have any large hindrances anymore. Once you rest a few more days, we can try to condense a new soul route for you. At that time, you'll definitely be ten times stronger than before, said Long Chen confidently. Hearing that, the two sisters were both delighted. Although Men Qi was a peaceful person, she also thirsted for power. After conversing for a while longer with the two of them, there was a disciple who came to tell Long Chen that the sect leader wanted to see him. Long Chen hastily went to see Ling Yanzi and saw that Tu Fang was also present. He immediately thanked Ling Yanzi. Sect leader, thank you for your trouble. If it hadn't been for you, I would have already died. Come and sit, smiled Ling Yanzi. Long Chen sat. He was extremely grateful to Ling Yanzi and Tu Fang. The two of them truly treated him like their own child. For him, Ling Yanzi had risked immense danger and repeatedly killed other sect leaders. As for Tu Fang, although he was only in the meridian opening realm when calamity had struck, he had still come, bringing others who wished to both live and die together. That kind of heroism was truly emotionally moving. Little fellow, this time you really were ruthless. The destruction of the Wind Spirit Pavilion is something on a completely different scale from anything else you've ever done. Ling Yanzi couldn't help shaking his head as he looked at Long Chen. What are you talking about, sect leader? I don't understand. Long Chen naturally wouldn't admit to it. He was always the kind of person who would do kind deeds but not leave behind his name. It's all right. In this world, only Tu Fang and I know a bit about your secrets. However, you don't need to worry, as we'll definitely help you keep them secret. Other than that, make sure not to tell anyone about the matter of your undergoing tribulation. That would implicate them, and in the future, their tribulations will be much more difficult. You have to be cautious, warned Ling Yanzi. Long Chen's heart shook. Ling Yanzi actually knew about his tribulation, and from his tone, it seemed he also knew some other things as well. However, seeing how solemn Ling Yanzi was acting, Long Chen nodded seriously. Ling Yanzi was warning him not to let others know too many of his secrets. Otherwise, that would invoke the power of karma, and when they underwent tribulations, they might very likely die. Furthermore, 
he was clearly only capable of hinting at that matter. The heavens would not allow anyone to speak about matters relating to the heavenly deos. Anyone who broke that rule would very likely end up bringing down heavenly punishment on themselves. Previously, all Ling Yanzi had said was the word divergent, but he had immediately been injured by heavenly punishment. Furthermore, at that time, he had only been at the early Xi'anshan realm, and he had been more isolated from the heavenly deos. But now that he had entered the mid Xi'anshan realm, the heavenly deos were able to sense him much more easily, and if he said that word again, he might instantly be killed. Today, I called the two of you over because I have a few things to tell you. I'm about to leave this place, said Ling Yunzi. Chapter 490 Ling Yunzi's Departure Translator, born to be your leaving, asked a startled Tu Fang, where are you going? Even Long Chen was astonished. Ling Yunzi said he was leaving. He didn't say he was leaving for a period of time. In other words, this time, I've obtained a heaven-defying opportunity that has enlightened me onto another kind of sword deo. I want to go out into the world and see whether or not I can bring my sword Deo to the pinnacle. Ling Yunzi smiled. How long will you be gone? Asked Tu Fang. This is what I will be pursuing for the rest of my life. If I cannot reach that level, then this life of mine will have not had any meaning. Said Ling Yunzi solemnly. He had dedicated the first half of his life to his monastery. Now it was time for him to live for his own sword Deo. He wanted to be a true sword cultivator. Free and unfettered walking to the ends of the world with just his sword. Then what about the monastery? Will Senior Kang Ming take on the sect leader position? Asked Tu Fang. Uncle Master has already brought his apprentice away. He said that until he manages to completely fill that little fellow's stomach, he won't be returning. Ling Yunzi laughed. Now Long Chen understood why he hadn't seen Wild during these days. He had already been brought away. Most likely. Kang Ming had also decided to strengthen his resolve and focus completely on raising his apprentice. Right now, Wild had become his entire focus. He wanted to raise Wild into a supreme expert, and as a result, he had even left behind his forge. It could be seen how determined Kang Ming was. So now that we've left, only you, Tu Fang, can be the sect leader, said Ling Yunzi. Me? How could that be possible? Tu Fang couldn't help being startled. He was still only at the peak of the meridian opening realm. Without stepping into the Xi'anshan realm, how could he take a sect leader position, let alone the position of the first monastery sect leader? Tu Fang, you are straightforward and upright, impartial and incorruptible. With your character, you can definitely take this position. Furthermore, you don't need to feel any pressure. As long as our first monastery has Long Chen, then our position as the first monastery cannot be budged. As for in the future when Long Chen leaves, the first monastery will naturally decline, and the position will be taken away. That just means our fate with that position has run out, and there's no need to fight over it. First place can't always be dominated by one person. The cycle turns continuously. Fortunes rise and fall. But that's what makes life interesting, said Ling Yunzi profoundly. Yes, sect leader, I understand, said Tu Fang respectfully. Ling Yunzi was telling him the cycle of the heavenly deos could not be reversed. For example, they had constantly been ranked 108th. But as soon as Long Chen joined, everything had changed. After experiencing countless dangers, after the suppression of both the righteous and corrupt paths, Long Chen had still soared, crushing the righteous and corrupt paths. The entire way, he had forced his way through a pile of corpses, bringing them to their current position. Times change. Any of those who had vainly attempted to block Long Chen all ended up in extremely miserable states. Ling Yunzi was using Long Chen as an example to direct Tu Fang. What is destined to be yours is something no one can snatch away. What is not destined to be yours is something you can't obtain no matter what. And if you try, it will cost you your life. These were the invisible rules of the heavenly deos. Ling Yunzi cared deeply about Tu Fang, and he didn't want him making the same mistake he had. He had ended up becoming too obsessed, ending up in an abyss of despair. Long Chen, I know this monastery will not be your limit. Perhaps there will be a day when we'll see each other again. At that time, I trust you'll be much stronger than you are right now, and much more domineering. Ling Yunzi patted Long Chen on the shoulder. The feeling of parting was always a sad one. All Long Chen could say was, Take care, sect leader. Ling Yunzi smiled and then walked away. Long Chen and Tu Fang didn't move. They both knew Ling Yunzi wouldn't want anyone to send him off. From today onwards, he would no longer have any shackles. He would be completely free. The next day, 
news of Chu Fang succeeding the sect leader position spread throughout the entire Super Monastery. In all of history, only Xi'anchen experts had had the qualifications to be sect leaders. Chu Fang was merely at the Meridian Opening Realm, but each monastery had the right to appoint their own sect leader. If they felt they didn't have enough power, they were able to ask the Super Monastery for help, and the Super Monastery would send them a Xi'anchen expert to take the sect leader position. Other than Tu Fang becoming sect leader, news of Ling Yunzi departing the monastery to pursue his sword Dao also spread, that made countless people dumbfounded. Now, Ling Yunzi had departed, and Kang Ming had brought away his apprentice to travel. In the entire first monastery, there was not a single Xi'anchen expert, that caused countless people to feel greed. Many Xi'anchen experts from the super monastery made applications to take the first monastery's sect leader position. Those applications were all immediately rejected. The reason? Long Chen had said the first monastery didn't need any expert as support because they were already strong enough. That instantly caused those thoughts to die. Those people thought of how Long Chen had killed two Xi'anchen experts on his own. That made them all turn silent. Once that matter passed, Long Chen had Tang Wan or help guard him and Men Qi. Currently, his forehead was pressed against Men Qi's forehead. Men Qi was completely red, as this position was too intimate. Seeing Long Chen suddenly smile and how his smile was slightly naughty, Men Qi couldn't help rebuking. What are you smiling about? He laughed. For Tang Wan Er to guard us as I take advantage of a jade beauty, it seems a bit strange. What do you mean? Take advantage of a jade beauty? How vulgar. Men Qi wrapped Long Chen on the head, turning even redder. All right. Well since you're no longer so nervous, we can start. Don't worry, I'll handle everything. Long Chen had just been purposely teasing her since he had noticed how worried she was. I'll begin now. After saying that, within his mind see, his spiritual strength began to roil, seeming like an angry sea as it rapidly circulated. He continuously compressed his spiritual strength. He needed to condense a spiritual seed. If the spiritual strength was a tree, then condensing a spiritual seed was like going through the twigs of that tree. Then he would snap off that twig and transplant it into Men Qi. Condensing a spiritual seed was not difficult. However, even after condensing a dozen of them, he still discarded them, as those spiritual seeds weren't strong enough. Long Chen wanted the strongest spiritual seed possible for Men Qi. That would be her future cultivation foundation. It was extremely easy to tell how strong a spiritual seed was by the strength of its spiritual fluctuations. An ordinary spiritual seed would take up one thousandth to three thousandths of a person's spiritual strength. However, the quality of a spiritual seed was based on the skill and soul energy of the person who condensed it. Long Chen had even condensed several spiritual seeds that took up eight thousandths of his spiritual strength, but he still discarded them. Boom. Just as Long Chen was starting to get impatient, his spiritual strength suddenly surged, and an immense spiritual seed appeared in his mind. See, Long Chen, don't, cried Men Qi, don't make a fuss, stay still, just like that. He inserted that huge spiritual seed into Men Qi's mind. See, Long Chen, Men Qi couldn't help feeling distressed, and her tears even began to fall. That huge spiritual seed contained a full tenth of his spiritual strength. As that spiritual seed left Long Chen's mind, see, he clenched his teeth and held back a pained groan. His veins bulged, and his body twitched intensely. He was essentially splitting a portion of his soul, and so he had to endure the pain of his soul tearing apart. Even though he had long since been prepared, he still almost couldn't hold back a scream. The pain of the soul could make a person go insane. As he did his best to endure that pain, he transplanted that huge spiritual seed into Men Qi's mind, see. As soon as he finished doing that, he felt as if the world was spinning around him and he almost collapsed, his body drenched in sweat, but looking at Men Qi whose eyes were now tightly closed, a smile appeared on his pale face, now that his spiritual seed had entered Men Qi's mind see, it had become ownerless, all Men Qi needed to do was use her mind to connect to that seed, and she would become its new master, it would become her new soul root, to Men Qi, that was something extremely simple, so he didn't have any worries, it would just take her a bit of time, right now, he was in immense pain from the tearing of his soul, and so he hastily activated the primal chaos bead. Previously, Long Chen had already circulated his two stars to return the primal chaos space to a flourishing state. The withered medicinal ingredients and trees had all been revived. Now, he drew on the primal chaos space's energy to heal the injury to his soul. Those huge trees, which had only just revived, now instantly withered. 
However, now he no longer felt as much pain. Unfortunately, it was unable to completely replenish the loss to his soul. But Long Chen decided not to touch the medicinal ingredients this time, as the energy within them was too little compared to the trees. After advancing to the bone forging realm, he had received an enormous surprise. After he had advanced, the primal chaos space had gone from being 3 miles wide to 30 miles wide. Now he could plant even more vegetation. If he managed to fill the entire space with huge trees, then his recovery ability would be shocking. As for the patch of black soil, it had also grown by 10 times. That black soil was able to devour flesh and turn it into life energy. Unfortunately, Long Chen didn't have any powerful magical beast corpses. Otherwise, such an immense life energy would be able to instantly heal his soul. Long Chen had already decided. After he had handled this matter, he would find some huge trees. The bigger the better, with as much life energy as possible. If he could find some immense trees, then he would have access to practically limitless life energy. Just as Long Chen was planning on how to use the primal chaos space, Men Qi slowly opened her eyes. Chapter 491 Blessings Should Be Shared Translator Born to be how do you feel? Asked Long Chen nervously. Long Chen, the first thing Men Qi saw when she opened her eyes was Long Chen's pale face, an unconcealable worry in his eyes. Her lips moved a few times, and she suddenly threw herself into his embrace, sobbing. Long Chen, you fool, why are you so stupid? As a soul cultivator, Men Qi naturally knew just how painful it was to give away a spiritual seed. Furthermore, he had given away a tenth of his spiritual strength to condense a supreme spiritual seed. That was all so Men Qi would be able to get stronger in the future. The soul was a person's weakest point. Once it was injured, that pain would make a person crazy. The pain Long Chen had suffered just now was something others were unable to even imagine. Men Qi sobbed into Long Chen's chest, feeling distressed and moved. Sobbing was the only way for her to express her emotions. I'm fine. Come on. Don't cry. Let me see your mind see. Long Chen wiped away her tears, smiling. All right. Men Qi opened up her mind see for him, allowing him to see that currently, her mind see was in an extremely active state. The soul root you newly made for me is currently devouring my old spiritual strength. Once that's completely devoured, I'll be able to condense new spiritual strength, explained Men Qi. The Wind Spirit Pavilion Master had been extremely insidious. He had spared Men Qi's spiritual strength but destroyed her soul root, making it so she was unable to use her spiritual strength. The spiritual seed Long Chen had given her had germinated within her mind C, becoming its new ruler. Her old spiritual strength was currently being used as nutrients for it to absorb. Once they were all absorbed, that spiritual seed would essentially become the ruler of the space and create new spiritual strength for her, completely transforming her soul. She also told Long Chen that because his soul seed had been so strong, it had saved her an immense amount of cultivation time. Originally, transplanting a spiritual seed wasn't something all too rare. But anyone willing to donate even the slightest bit of their spiritual strength was already making an immense sacrifice. If Long Chen hadn't had the primal chaos beat and had torn his soul like this, then that injury would never fully heal in his lifetime. Those who had a new soul root transplanted in them were usually starting their cultivation anew, and they would increase their spiritual strength bit by bit. The spiritual strength Long Chen had bestowed upon her had ended up losing the majority of its energy when it was transformed into a spiritual seed. But even so, Men Qi estimated that once she could control it, her own spiritual strength would not be at all weaker compared to her old soul root before it was destroyed. In fact, perhaps it would even be slightly stronger, as Long Chen's spiritual strength was just too terrifying. Long Chen, the injury to your soul. Men Qi was still worried as Long Chen's face was completely pale. Haha, <laughs> didn't I say I had my own method? You can be at ease. Long Chen held Men Qi's hand. Let's go. It's been a long time since we've relaxed. We'll gather everyone and have a barbecue. Long Chen's proposal met with everyone's approval. Men Qi, Tang Wan'er, Guo Ran, and the others all became filled with excitement. The first monastery occupied a vast territory, and the surroundings were enchantingly beautiful. They found a quiet lakeside to have their barbecue. The green meadow here stretched far into the horizon, and with the afternoon sun shining on them, they all began to feel comfortable and lazy. They had stayed in the secret realm for so long that they had almost forgotten what the sun felt like. Gu Yang, Song Mingguan, Li Qi, and Yu Zifeng had already started a fire. Everyone agreed not to use their spiritual key and to work like ordinary mortals. After starting the fire, 
they began to go hunting in the surroundings. As for Guo Ran, he patted himself on the chest and guaranteed he would get some fish. However, even after an hour with a fishing hook, he hadn't caught a single fish. Furious, he ended up shooting an explosive arrow into the water. As a result, after a huge wave, quite a few fish ended up passing out from the shock wave, and they floated to the surface. That caused quite a few disdainful gazes to land on Guo Ran. However, Guo Ran didn't blush, saying that he hadn't used his spiritual key at all. Technically, he was right. He hadn't used his spiritual key. His old armor had already been destroyed now. He was preparing to build an entirely new suit of armor, and he said he would make one according to the specifications of a Xi'anchen expert. Long Chen suddenly thought of something, and he asked Men Qi, Do you still have the golden page? Here, a golden page appeared in her hand, that put Long Chen at ease, as he had been worried that the Wind Spirit Pavilion would have taken it away. But Men Qi told him that she had had the Violet Phoenix Sparrow bring the golden page into her spiritual space to avoid it being snatched. However, after her soul root had been destroyed, she had lost control over her spiritual spaces. She was only able to bring it out now that she had a new spiritual seed. Lend me the golden page for a while. Long Chen smiled. I feel like you should just keep it. I really am too stupid. I ended up forgetting your warning and used it to fight directly. As a result, this powerful treasure ended up useless in my hands and snatched away by Feng Xiao Zi. Men Qi was still a bit ashamed of that. That can't be blamed on you. When a person gets furious, would they care so much about that? Aren't I the same? When I get angry, I don't even recognize myself. Consoled Long Chen. Men Qi couldn't help laughing sweetly at that. Hearing her laughter, Long Chen's heart jumped. Sister Men Qi, you have to be careful. A certain someone's eyes have gotten bigger. Most likely, they're thinking of some sinister plot to use against you. Warned Tang Wan Er. Men Qi blushed and Long Chen clenched his teeth, glaring at her. Little girl, just you wait. One day, I'll make you grab the railings and bite the bed sheet. Tang Wan Er glared back at Long Chen. In the end, it was Long Chen who turned away in guilt. You two can chat. I'll go help over there. Long Chen just directly left now that the atmosphere had been ruined by Tang Wan Er. But before he left, he didn't forget to give Tang Wan Er a ruthless glare. His meaning being that she should just wait until she was alone. Everyone was busy working. As for Long Chen, after thinking for a bit, he ended up taking out a brush and paper, drawing some unknown thing. Only after modifying it for a long time was he finally satisfied with it. Guo Ran, put aside the fish for now and come here. Long Chen called over Guo Ran, who had been in the midst of cleaning the fish scales. He handed over the paper to him. I'm going to be your forging shop's first customer. Help me create this. Taking the paper, Guo Ran saw that there were many tiny objects and lines. When he finally finished looking over it, he couldn't help crying out in grief. Boss, you should just kill me instead. I'm unable to make such a thing. Don't be like that. I trust that with your crafting skills, you'll definitely be able to succeed. He patted Guo Ran on the shoulders, seeming to say he should have confidence in his skills. But this thing's too complicated. There are so many separate parts, and each one needs runes carved into it. Furthermore, I don't even know how to do this, cried Guo Ran. Don't spout your nonsense with me, little fellow. Do you think I don't know that you're just afraid of it being troublesome? Don't forget, the ethereal crafting secret record was something I gave to you, so don't think I'm an amateur. If you aren't willing to do it, then lend your crafting hammer and forging table for me to use. I'll make it myself, said Long Chen. Absolutely not. My forging table is my wife. I can't let anyone else use her. Then take the page. I find you really are growing lazier and lazier. Long Chen stuffed the page into Guo Ran's hand, his expression a bit contemptuous. Boss, you're the one who's just going to be standing to the side as I work. Guo Ran even began to cry. Looking at the complicated diagram, he almost had an urge to kill himself. Long Chen also had the ethereal crafting secret record in his mind, and although he hadn't studied it closely, he was able to comprehend many things from it. It was precisely because Long Chen had that knowledge that he wasn't duped by Guo Ran. Only experts could con experts. All right, can you stop crying now? It's ugly. We're brothers, and when have I ever mistreated you? Let me ask you, what kind of person can fly? Long Chen smiled. Birdman. 1. Guo Ran replied without hesitation. But in truth, he knew only experts on the level of the monastery head could fly. Ugh. There really is no way to talk to you. Here. 
Long Chen handed him another piece of paper. What's this? Guo Ran saw this page had a diagram of an odd little boat. At the bottom of the boat were countless holes that were set up according to a specific pattern. There was a large notch at both the bow and aft of the boat. He didn't know what they were used for, as it simply looked extremely odd. What do you think? If you place wind spirit stones at the places I marked, what would happen? Laughed Long Chen. Damn, then it really could fly. Guo Ran slapped himself in the leg, his eyes shining excitedly. I've already given you the blueprint. If you could create such a boat, and fly up in the sky, he, you understand. Long Chen raised his eyebrows, laughing mischievously. Guo Ran's eyes shone brighter than ever. Boss, you really are a genius. I really have to admire you. Aren't we brothers? We'll share blessings and disasters together. Complete the matter I gave you, and you'll have more than enough wind spirit stones to play with. Don't worry boss, now my motivation is on a whole new level. I'll definitely perfectly accomplish that task. Guo Ran now seemed the complete opposite of his previously dejected self. As the two of them talked, Song Mingyuan and the others returned from their hunting, bringing with them a few wild fowls and a boar. In the evening, they sat around a fire, drinking and laughing, relaxing as much as possible. This opportunity was too rare, and they all needed to loosen their tense nerves. Men Qi and Tang Wan Er laughed as they watched Long Chen. Right now, Long Chen was playing a finger-guessing game with great, drunken enthusiasm. Sometimes he would even act shameless, refusing to admit that he had lost, causing the two of them to shake with laughter. They had never seen someone like Long Chen, and he gave them an extremely close feeling. They drank until the sky brightened, then they returned to the monastery. There was no way around it, as they didn't have that much time to waste. The crisis hadn't necessarily passed. 1. This is a curse meaning fucker. Chapter 492 Fifth Tier Pill Furnace Translator Born to be now that Tu Fang was the sect leader, he was exceptionally busy, as the first monastery was enormous, and there were too many tasks for him to handle. The original first monastery's residents had been ordered by the monastery head to leave with nothing, and she had said that any violators would be killed. Under those circumstances, who would have dared to take anything? However, that didn't mean they had to be nice. Although they hadn't touched anything, they were still able to give Tu Fang some trouble. For example, the keys to some storehouses had been lost, or a warehouse's account books might have been destroyed by rats. These kinds of matters were plentiful. The new residents already had much less manpower than the original residents. Now Tu Fang was in over his head, but there was no way around that. He could only work all day and night, taking inventory of the storehouses. Otherwise, if he didn't even know what kind of resources were within his own monastery, that really would be a joke. There weren't enough elders to handle all the work, so some disciples were forced to help. But there was at least one piece of excellent news. The first monastery's resources were extremely plentiful, and the pay for the working disciples was over a hundred times what it would have been in the 108th monastery. There were some people who immediately leaped to go to work as well, but they all knew what kind of person Tu Fang was. If you were going to be paid, you had better do work. But if you did work hard, you would definitely be paid generously. Once Long Chen and the others returned, they also got busy. Guo Ran went to work on the blueprint Long Chen had given him. As for Men Qi, she was busy merging with Long Chen's spiritual seed. Although this seed was now hers, it still had Long Chen's imprint on it. She needed to work to merge with it until their connection was flawless. Only then could she control her spiritual strength perfectly. But what delighted her was that the spiritual seed was much, much stronger than her expectations. As soon as it began to merge with her, it began to rapidly grow. It was already much stronger than her old soul root. It was like the seed of a heaven-reaching tree. As long as the earth was fertile enough, it could grow to the peak of the world. That made Men Qi incredibly grateful to Long Chen, and she swore to herself that she would work hard on cultivating. She would be like Chu Yao and protect Long Chen in the future. Tang Wan Er was also busy. Long Chen had asked Tu Fang to lend him an immense underground warehouse. This warehouse was hundreds of meters wide. Long Chen placed the huge wind spirit crystal within it. It was a good thing the first monastery's warehouses were made of special material and incredibly sturdy, or it would have instantly blown up from the wind spirit crystal's energy. Tang Wan Er and Little Snow were sitting in front of the wind spirit crystal, studying the terrifying fluctuations from within it. Tang Wan Er had already refined an ocean's worth of wind spirit stones, and she already had a foundation when it came to wind. That was the only reason why Long Chen dared to allow her to study the wind spirit crystal's energy. 
the difference between wind spirit stones and the wind spirit crystal was immense. If the wind spirit stone's energy was like a puddle, then the wind spirit crystal's energy was like a raging sea. Without a certain foundation, it was impossible to comprehend the profound and mysterious fluctuations within the wind spirit crystal. As for Little Snow, he had consumed the barbaric wind beast's Needon, and his wind energy had become even purer. Most terrifying of all, as a magical beast, his wind energy was shockingly forceful. After the final battle in the secret realm, everyone had been completely exhausted. Only Little Snow had still been filled with energy. It could be seen how terrifying he was. Long Chen hoped for the two of them to comprehend some of the wind mysteries within the wind spirit crystal, raising their comprehension. As for Gu Yang, Song Mingguan, Li Qi, and Yu Zifeng, they had all entered seclusion to cultivate. There was an immense number of bone tempering pills in the first monastery, and Long Chen had them consume those first. Although those medicinal pills were trash in Long Chen's eyes, there was no harm in consuming them. It would just be less efficient. Currently, Long Chen didn't have time to refine pills for them, so he had them consume these ones first, and when he finally had time, he would refine more pills for them. Long Chen went to see Tu Fang, asking him to give him a list of disciples who had come to support him at the risk of their lives. Seeing Tu Fang was curious, Long Chen said the following, those who could follow him in life and death were his brothers, and he definitely couldn't mistreat his own brothers. He would raise them with his full ability. From Tu Fang, he learned there had been a total of 347 disciples who had come with him to the first monastery. He gave Long Chen a list of names. Looking over that list, Long Chen couldn't help but smile. At the same time, he was filled with emotion. He didn't recognize the majority of the names on that list, but those people had all been hot-blooded enough to abandon their own lives to follow him in life and death. There was only one word to call such people, brothers. Since they were brothers, they should follow each other in life and death sharing wealth and happiness. Now that the life and death crisis had passed, Long Chen definitely wouldn't let them lose out. Long Chen returned to his residence. Tu Fang had set up that place for him, and it was extremely spacious. There were even disciples guarding the perimeter so that no one would disturb him. There, he took out some medicinal ingredients but then suddenly clapped himself in the head. He had actually forgotten to go get a good pill furnace from the storehouses. Wait, I probably won't have to go there. Long Chen suddenly thought of something and took out a spatial ring. That was a simple ring, with a sparkling gemstone embedded into it. That gemstone was sometimes called storage stone or spatial stone. It had its own space inside it. Looking at that spatial ring, Long Chen smiled, thinking of Guo Ran. Guo Ran was like Long Chen and was extremely brazen. He dared attempt all kinds of crazy ideas. Long Chen was the only one who knew the secret behind Guo Ran's armor because Guo Ran had once shown off his brilliant idea to him. He had actually taken the spatial stones within spatial rings and directly embedded them into his meridians. He had embedded a total of 16 spatial stones in the meridians all over his body. That way, with just a thought of his spiritual strength, the armor within those spatial stones would instantly cover him. That was also why Guo Ran's armor seemed like magic and others were unable to see how he put it on. He had set up special components on each of the spatial stones so that the armor would instantly assemble. Even Long Chen had been completely astonished by Guo Ran's smarts. Other than the armor, those spatial stones also contained his consumables, and he could replenish them at will. Shaking his head, Long Chen had no choice but to admit Guo Ran really did come up with quite a few crazy ideas. However, this spatial ring in front of him was a bit special. There was an exceptionally exquisite flame pattern on it, and within the ring itself was an indentation of a small tower, that was naturally the pill tower's marking. The owner of this ring had been Huo Wufang. This was Long Chen's battle spoils. When he had thought of the pill furnace just now, he had also thought of this spatial ring. Oh, there's still a spiritual imprint? He, so that little fellow hasn't died yet. Truly worthy of congratulations. Spiritual imprint was something that could be left behind on certain objects by people with strong enough spiritual strength. If such an object stayed with its owner for a long period of time, then it would form a kind of resonance, and as long as the owner didn't die, the spiritual imprint wouldn't fade. Furthermore, that spiritual imprint would be like a faithful guard dog. If anyone else tried to open the spatial ring, it would attack them. Finding out that Huo Wufang hadn't died made Long Chen smile with gratification. I wonder who is happier, him or Yun Wushuang. Long Chen snorted, and his spiritual strength directly erased Huo Wufang's spiritual imprint.
Perhaps that spiritual imprint might be able to cause some trouble for others, but Long Chen could erase it with a wave of his hand. Opening the spatial ring, Long Chen couldn't help jumping in shock. This spatial ring actually had a subsidiary life space attached to it. In other words, it could be considered a life ring, but this life ring was far better than the one he had obtained before. It was actually 3,000 meters wide and was like its own world. He actually built a palace within his spatial ring. What an idiot. Long Chen sneered upon seeing the world within the spatial ring. But after looking inside the palace, he understood that Hua Wufang had treated this palace as a treasure house. There were all kinds of weapons, secret arts, and bottles of treasures piled within it. He hadn't expected that idiot to be so obsessive. He had actually arranged everything incredibly neatly. Outside the palace was a medicinal field with many precious herbs. Quite a few of them had new soil beneath them, which indicated Hua Wufang had most likely obtained them within the Jiuli secret realm. He, nice, nice, I'll transplant them into the primal chaos space. Long Chen was delighted upon seeing the medicinal ingredients. That fellow truly was rich. There were hundreds of rare medicinal ingredients here, many of which he didn't have. To pill cultivators, medicinal ingredients were like their lives. No matter how many they had, it wouldn't be enough. Originally, Long Chen had been planning on waiting a bit and patiently going through what else Hua Wufang had, but he had overestimated himself. He ended up directly transplanting all of them first. That took him quite a few hours. Not only had he transplanted the medicinal ingredients, but he had even moved the palace into his primal chaos space. Plunk. A certain object rolled out of the palace. Pill furnace. Long Chen cried out with delight. Originally. This ancient bronze pill furnace had been placed atop a platform in the palace. When he had moved the palace, it had ended up shaking the palace, and the pill furnace had fallen off, rolling out, based on the handles and pinholes. This is actually a peak fifth tier pill furnace. Long Chen's eyes reddened. The pill furnaces he had been using had all been second tier pill furnaces and incredibly rotten. They were so terrible that he didn't even dare use his full strength when using them. And even so. His pill furnaces were like firecrackers, blowing up one by one. But with the fifth tier pill furnace, he wouldn't have to worry about that anymore. He could refine pills with his full strength. A fifth tier pill furnace could refine fifth tier medicinal ingredients without problem. In fact, it could even refine sixth tier medicinal ingredients. Ha ha ha. Time to get to work. Long Chen laughed and immediately began refining pills. Chapter 493 Dragonblood Legion Translator Born to be Bang after a muffled sound, Long Chen slowly opened the pill furnace and sighed emotionally. If a worker wanted to do good work, then they really did need good tools first. Previously, each time his refinement was about to be complete, an explosive sound would ring out from his pill furnace. Each time, Long Chen had to be on the edge of his seat, afraid the pill furnace would explode. But this time, instead of an explosive sound, it was just a light, muffled grunt. Using a 5th tier pill furnace to refine 4th tier medicinal pills was truly effortless for him. Most importantly, he could fully activate his pill flame now, allowing him to use his greatest techniques. 9 medicinal pills were shining like jade, halos of light present on each of them. Each one of these pills had rings on them. Refining ringed 4th tier medicinal pills was a criteria for the examination to become a pill king. As for the bone connecting pills Long Chen had just refined, each one of them had at least 3 rings and some even had five rings. Each increase in rings represented an increase in the quality of the medicinal pills. Five rings was something even pill kings that had devoted their whole life to the pill deo were not necessarily able to achieve. Long Chen finally had a chance to experience what it was like for his equipment to be completely revamped. These bone connecting pills were for those 300 plus life and death brothers of his. He had refined over 300 bone connecting pills so that they could all undergo complete tempering. It had to be known that the bone forging realm was the most important of the five Haoshan realms. You were essentially building a foundation twice. Undergoing complete tempering could make a person completely transform. Right now, Long Chen definitely didn't have enough bone tempering pills for over 300 people. But with a heaven defying treasure like the primal chaos bead, it would be fine as long as he had enough time. Long Chen didn't care about their talent. Talent could be raised. Spirit roots could be upgraded. But a person's inherent nature was extremely difficult to change. What Long Chen cared about the most was these people's loyalty. Despite clearly knowing they would definitely die, they had still marched bravely to the first monastery in order to follow Long Chen and the others in life and death. That kind of loyalty was the most valuable thing. 
As for those various disciples and elders who hadn't come with them for various reasons, Long Chen didn't feel a grudge towards them, but he also had no obligation to treat them so well, other than members of the new generation of disciples. People like senior apprentice brother Wang had come as well. Long Chen was planning on washing away their tempered bones and then having them consume the bone connecting pill. He wanted everyone to undergo complete tempering. If he allowed senior apprentice brother Wang and the others who had already started on the path of ordinary bone tempering to continue, then after some time, they would be thrown far into the distance. That would definitely be discouraging for them. They were all life and death brothers and Long Chen was planning on walking together with them on his cultivation path to compete against the heavenly geniuses of all the various sects, to look down arrogantly upon the whole world. No matter how strong a single person was, it had no meaning. Only a group strength was the greatest. For example, in the secret realm, Long Chen had already reached the pinnacle, but even though he had been strong, he had still needed everyone's assistance. If he hadn't had their help, then even if he wouldn't have died in the secret realm, he would have died outside. So this time, Long Chen had made his resolution. He would make a powerful group to face off against the futures and known dangers. Within a plaza at the back of a mountain in the first monastery, there were over 300 disciples standing gravely, looking at the figure in front of them. Their eyes were filled with admiration and worship. Within the secret realm, this person had dominated the pinnacle experts of the two paths on his own. His blood-colored saber had cut apart the very world terrifying countless people. Brothers, today I've gathered you to tell you one thing. From today onwards, you will all be my life and death brothers, announced Long Chen as he looked upon those fervent faces. Gu Yang, Song Mingguan, hand out the medicinal pills. Gu Yang and the others quickly began to distribute the medicinal pills Long Chen gave them. When they saw what those medicinal pills were, they were all shocked. But then they quickly understood Long Chen's intentions, causing them to be filled with admiration. The scale at which Long Chen did things was always too shocking. All right, you can swallow the medicinal pills, said Long Chen. Seeing them all swallow the medicinal pills without a moment's hesitation, a warm feeling filled Long Chen. Trust was always the hardest thing to obtain. Everyone here, we're all brothers wait a moment. No, there are also some sisters. Long Chen suddenly became a bit embarrassed, as he noticed there were five women amongst them. One of them was someone he was very familiar with. King Yu. Tang Wanner's maid and good sister, but they were just wearing ordinary, sexless clothes, so he had made an oversight. Cough, whether you are brothers or sisters, from today onwards, we are all one family, since you are capable of being unafraid of death, treading through water or fire for me, then I, Long Chen, will also do the same for you. Hearing Long Chen's powerful and resonating words, quite a few disciples' eyes reddened from emotion. Back then, in the righteous and corrupt battle, Long Chen had said the same, and he had then used his conduct to show he was telling the truth. For everyone's safety, the opponents Long Chen chose for himself were always the strongest and most ruthless. Whenever there was danger, he was always the first to face it. Such a heroic figure was someone they admired and worshipped. Now his words caused all their blood to boil. Starting today, we will form a group. All of us will now be members of the Dragon Blood Legion. Dragons are divine beasts from legends that can disdain the nine heavens and look down on all. A dragon's will is something neither gods nor devils can shake. Let our hot blood merge with the will of the dragon. From today onwards, we will be the masters of our own fates. We won't lower our heads to anyone. No matter how poor our origins are. No matter how inferior our bloodline is. No matter how garbage our talent is. From today onwards, we will be dragons that can look down on the rest of the world. We will rise and no one can bar our path. Long Chen's voice struck like hammers into the core of people's hearts, causing all their blood to boil. Dragon Blood Legion, Dragon Blood Legion, Dragon Blood Legion. Everyone couldn't help letting out a heaven-shaking cheer, their voices coming in waves that resounded throughout the sky. Within that cheering was boundless excitement, that was an emotion from finally being released after years of suppression. In their hearts, Long Chen was just like a god, they would never doubt his words. From today onwards, you don't need to be subjected to the monastery's administration and restrictions. You only have to listen to me. I will make you a cultivation plan that will let you quickly advance. This place is reserved for you to cultivate. Long Chen pointed towards the large building behind them. This place was something Long Chen had asked for from Tu Fang. No matter what Long Chen said, Tu Fang would support him. He hadn't even objected when Long Chen wanted to create his own group. Something that went against the rules. Tu Fang was like Ling Yanzi. 
He had watched Long Chen grow up step by step. Now that Long Chen's sharpness had finally been revealed to all, he would support him no matter what he wanted to do. This was a region Long Chen had reserved for them. He was planning on secretly training them here. In the future, he hoped to raise them into this world's most terrifying legion. Now, this place had become a restricted land. Other than members of the legion, nobody else was allowed to enter. Not even elders. Gu Yang, Song Mingyuan, Li Qi, and Yu Zifeng were now the Dragonblood Legion's generals. There were 347 new disciples that were part of the Dragonblood Legion. Then adding on Senior Apprentice Brother Wan, Senior Apprentice Brother Chang, and the others, they had a perfect 360 members. The four generals were in command of 90 people each, while there was also a squad leader per group of five. That would make it easier to manage everyone. After organizing this, Long Chen left, leaving the rest to Gu Yang and the others. He had them tell the others his bone tempering plan. When they heard the words complete tempering, all of them were stupefied. Long Chen actually wanted all of them to undergo complete tempering. They felt as if they were dreaming. Even large sects were not able to afford such an expenditure. For example, within all of Mogate, only Mo Nian had the talent and qualifications for the sect to bring out enough resources for him to undergo complete tempering. Just who was Mo Nian? He was Mo Gate's number one disciple, while they were simply ordinary disciples. Whether it was status or talent, they were miles away from reaching Mo Nian's level. The first thing they thought of when they heard Long Chen wanted them to undergo complete tempering was the ocean's worth of resources that needed to be spent. That made all of them extremely grateful to Long Chen, as he truly did show exceptional consideration for them. After they all calmed down, Gu Yang gave them Long Chen's instructions, having them absorb the bone connecting pill's energy to create channels in their bones. As for senior apprentice brother Wan and the others who had already begun tempering their bones, Long Chen gave them a medicinal pill that would wash away their tempered bones, allowing them to newly undergo complete tempering. These disciples mostly had ordinary talent, and after the year Long Chen had been in the secret realm, the majority of them had reached the peak of the tendon transformation realm and were stuck in a bottleneck. Long Chen gave those people a bone barrier breaking pill. The medicinal pills Long Chen gave them were all ringed pills with powerful medicinal energy. Those pills allowed them to advance effortlessly to the bone forging realm. Furthermore, even though they relied on a medicinal pill to advance, this medicinal pill allowed them to advance extremely stably, without any danger to their foundations. However, he had them rest three days after advancing to bone forging so they could accustom themselves to their energy first. Only then were they to consume bone tempering pills. Those bone tempering pills were all ones that had been in the storehouses. The first monastery had saved plenty of bone tempering pills over time. Long Chen could be considered half the leader of the first monastery, and he took over 80% of the bone tempering pills for the Dragonblood Legion. But even the remaining 20% were enough for the monastery to use for many years. This year especially, they simply had too few disciples. Most importantly, the monastery's battle techniques were given free of charge to the Dragonblood Legion members to study, and the weapons in the weapons repository were also given freely to them. Right now, Long Chen was going all out to equip his troops. In any case, they had gained the first monastery's position and resources for free, and if they didn't use them, they would just be wasted. Long Chen's actions caused quite a few elders to turn red-eyed, and after they complained to Tu Fang several times, Tu Fang icily replied, this monastery is something Long Chen conquered, and if you aren't satisfied, you can conquer your own monastery to play with. Chapter 494 Flame Serpent, Lightning Serpent Translator, born to be after setting up the plans for the Dragonblood Legion, Long Chen had Gu Yang handle the rest. Originally, Guo Ran was more suited to management, but he was busy with his own mission. Time was short and Long Chen urgently needed to enter seclusion, but there was still one more thing he needed to do first that was to refine the spirit ascension pill. The spirit ascension pill's main ingredient was the killin' fruit. It was a heaven-defying medicinal pill that could increase the quality of a person's spirit root. If one of them appeared, countless Haoshan geniuses would go crazy to obtain it. The reason why Long Chen gave Zhen Wenlong a killin' fruit was because he wanted to display his trust and appreciation for him. He knew that as a businessman, he definitely would understand to keep the matter secret. By cooperating with Zhen Wenlong, Long Chen was sure he would obtain many benefits, and that was why he had given him such a precious killin' fruit. Going through his pill god memories, Long Chen chose to refine the Jade Cliff Spirit Ascension pill. 
That pill had an extremely bizarre pill formula that used the killin fruit as the main ingredient and the jade wind grass and spirit cliff mushroom as secondary ingredients. Originally, the jade wind grass and spirit cliff mushrooms medicinal natures clashed and were unable to merge together. But with the killin fruit's essence, these two yin and yang ingredients became harmonious and fully activated the killin fruit's spirituality. The jade cliff spirit ascension pill was a fourth tier medicinal pill. Refining it wasn't difficult for Long Chen. With the assistance of a peak fifth-tier pill furnace, he refined over a thousand of them in just three days. He gave the majority of them to Gu Yang, having him distribute them. For now, each person could only consume three. However, the spirit ascension pills he had refined were extremely powerful. The majority of these disciples' spirit roots were only at the bronze grade, but after three spirit ascension pills, their spirit roots would undergo a heaven-toppling transformation. A bronze grade spirit root would definitely advance to the silver grade, while a silver grade spirit root had a 50% chance of advancing to the gold grade. That was the same grade as Tang Wan Er. It had to be known the reason Tang Wan Er's cultivation speed was the greatest out of everyone was because of her spirit root. It allowed her to advance twice as fast with half the effort. Promoting everyone's spirit roots was incredibly important, but Long Chen didn't have that much time. He refined enough for them to have three and then he went into seclusion himself. There was also a portion that he gave to Menki and Tang Wan Er and also some that he sent to Chu Yao in the Skywood Palace. As for Guo Ran, well, he didn't need them. His cultivation path was different from other people's, and it had nothing to do with his spirit root. As long as he maintained a flawless Dao heart, Long Chen could use medicinal pills to continuously push his cultivation base higher. After handling the matter of the spirit ascension pills, Long Chen finally relaxed. At the same time as he needed to increase everyone's power, he also needed to increase his own. Slow down. Slower. Slower. Fuck. Long Chen sighed. Looking at the ashes in the pill furnace, he felt a bit powerless. This earth flame is too hard to control. For now, I can't use it to refine pills. He sighed. Just now, he had tried using the earth flame to refine a fifth tier medicinal pill, but it had ended up in failure at the very start. The medicinal ingredients in the pill furnace had instantly been turned to ash. Using it to fight is alright, but with my current soul energy, it's impossible for me to control it down to the finest detail. Long Chen couldn't help shaking his head. This was like having a five-year-old child swing a hundred-pound hammer to smash open a walnut. Even if the child possessed divine strength and could lift the hammer, once it was smashed down, then let alone the walnut, even the ground would be smashed to bits. The other thing was that the earth flame had yet to mature. It was like a child that was still learning to walk, and it staggered and stumbled. It couldn't cooperate perfectly with Long Chen. Unlike other pill cultivators, Long Chen had not transformed the earth flame into his core flame. That would damage the earth flame's spirituality, and it would end up losing its soul, becoming a mindless tool. Instead, he allowed it to grow and cultivate in his body. In fact, he would even allow it to grow stronger than himself. That would be dangerous since the earth flame could rebel, and pill cultivators generally wouldn't risk such a thing. That was definitely playing with fire. However, Long Chen wasn't afraid. He handled matters according to his feelings. His god, that was similar to how he hadn't placed a slave imprint on Little Snow all that time ago. He hadn't wanted to treat Little Snow as a tool. It was the same with this earth flame. Long Chen was unable to treat it as just a tool, because he could sense it had its own emotions. It had its own life and ascension, albeit infantile, consciousness. Long Chen had a premonition that it would become one of his greatest strengths in the future. However, the current earth flame couldn't be used to refine pills, and so all Long Chen could do was continuously feed it his pill flame for it to slowly grow. This earth flame had originally lived underground, absorbing the energy from the lava to grow, but that kind of growth was extremely slow. It was said that for an ordinary earth flame, from the day it was born to the time it gained its own spiritual wisdom would require several millennia, and for it to fully mature would require tens or even hundreds of millennia. However, Long Chen's pill flame was condensed from the spiritual key of heaven and earth, and it was extremely beneficial to it. That was also why the earth flame had attacked him back then. It had been an instinctual reaction upon seeing food. With the support of his divine ring, the rate at which he condensed his pill flame was now greater than the earth flame could eat. Without fear of running out, he allowed the earth flame to eat until it was full. Then it fell into a deep slumber for a few days. Furthermore, after just a few days, the earth flame was noticeably stronger. That delighted Long Chen, as that kind of growth rate was too shocking. 
On one of his arms was a tattoo of a blue serpent. He had another serpent tattoo on his other arm. That was something he had only noticed after a while. This tattoo was extremely detailed, and it was even possible to see the serpent's tiny scales. A careful examination would reveal that those weren't scales but formed from countless, tiny, flickering lightning runes. It was extremely bizarre. My thunder force has actually all condensed into my left arm. There were no longer any thunder force runes in his blood. All of it was in that one arm. That arm's tattoo was like another dungeon to him. One that could only contain thunder force. That transformation was extremely surprising to Long Chen. Crackle. Long Chen extended a hand, and a ball of lightning appeared on the tip of his finger. He pointed it lightly in front of him. Boom. The rock in front of him broke. Not only that, but even a small mountain a mile away was pierced through. What a sharp attack. Long Chen was shocked and delighted. After escaping from the jaws of death, he had actually obtained such a large gain. His thunder force had completely transformed. This serpent tattoo naturally reminded Long Chen of the final two lightning pythons that had descended from the heavens back then. That attack had been one that could shake the entire world. Just thinking about it made Long Chen feel some lingering fear. He had truly just been the tiniest bit away from being destroyed by that terrifying lightning tribulation. Each lightning tribulation he underwent was more terrifying than the last. By now, he no longer had the slightest wishful thinking towards it. Last time, he only survived because of luck. If he didn't think of a way to resist the lightning tribulation, next time he would definitely die. He had to think of some way to strengthen his physical body. With a thought from him, his lightning tattoo lit up and a terrifying destructive aura sword. Countless bolts of thunder force covered his body. Crackling and rumbling rang out. Arcs of light drifted chaotically over his body, making him look like a lightning god. Nice. This can count as a lightning battle armor but it can only passively cover my body, and I still don't have a good technique to control my thunder force. Long Chen couldn't help but feel that it was regretful as he looked at the thunder force drifting over his body. The thunderization Artie had was unable to control his thunder force. He had to find some other way, but one thing that made him excited was that just by activating the lightning battle armor, endless thunder force would rush around his body, and it felt as if lightning hammers were constantly striking his body helping him to temper his flesh. However, he only managed to last an incense stick's worth of time before feeling sore and numb all over his body. Unable to continue bearing the thunder force tempering, he returned his thunder force back into the lightning tattoo. He looked at the two tattoos on his arms and clenched his fists. Now he had two more powerful trump cards. Furthermore, they were both trump cards that could continue growing. Whether it was the thunder force or the earth flame, they were both extremely terrifying and even Xi'anshan experts could be killed if they were caught off guard. Currently, his thunder force was even slightly stronger than the earth flame, but that was just because the earth flame was still too immature and needed time to grow. Looking towards the lightning serpent tattoo on his left arm, Long Chen suddenly laughed. Not far from the lightning serpent tattoo was a crescent moon tattoo. The lightning serpent's mouth was currently directly facing that moon, seeming to be playing around. Long Chen couldn't help smiling and a beautiful face appeared in his mind. That pair of soul-stealing eyes was something he would never be able to forget. Then when he thought of how the two of them had lain on each other in their exhaustion, when he thought of her soft body and faint scent, he couldn't help feeling a bit of melancholy. He had no idea if he would ever see her again. In regards to Yu Ziaokian, Long Chen felt an indescribable emotion. In the beginning, when she had first saved him, he had been filled with gratefulness, thinking her to be a peerless expert. But the second time they met, within the Abyss of Fiends, that opinion had ended up completely toppled. Battle skills so powerful that they would shock a person to their core, but so little experience that it would make a person incredibly worried for her. Sometimes she was so calm that it was frightening, and sometimes she was so immature it was funny. She truly was capable of stealing away a person's heart. Putting that aside and calming himself back down, Long Chen rested and then continued using Thunder Force to temper his body. He wanted to use his thunder force to bring his body to the greatest possible level before he underwent bone tempering. But he had only been in seclusion for seven days when Tu Fang called him out and gave him a mission to attend the yearly sect leader official meeting Novaloon.com when he heard that. He was dumbfounded. Wasn't Tu Fang the sect leader? What did a sect leader meeting have to do with him? But Tu Fang had just laughed and said that he was just sect leader in name and that Long Chen was the real sect leader. If he went himself then he would probably be ridiculed by countless people. But if Long Chen went, at the very least, 
No one would dare insult him. Previously, Long Chen had killed two sect leaders, shocking everyone. In theory, there shouldn't be anyone who would dare be disrespectful to a youth that was currently soaring. Long Chen thought about it and simply decided to accept his fate. For Tu Fang to treat him like this, he couldn't possibly just watch as Tu Fang was humiliated. He thickened his skin and agreed, changing his robes, and following several elders, obediently sitting in a transportation formation. He waited to be sent to the Super Monastery. Chapter 495 You Dare Strike Me? Translator. Born to be his vision darkened for a moment, and then Long Chen and the others appeared in a huge transportation formation. They looked around and saw the same kind of scenery. Long Chen couldn't help but sigh. The 108th Monastery's transportation formation had been nauseating to use. But now, they instantly arrived without the slightest discomfort. It was convenient, fast, safe, and painless. What was reflected in their eyes was still a huge plaza, and at the center of the plaza was a statue 300 meters tall. The statue depicted an elder with a tranquil expression who possessed an immortal air around him. It was the same statue as the one in the 108th monastery, but this statue was 10 times larger, and it wasn't at all damaged. It was incredibly lifelike, and Long Chen felt an odd charm from it, almost as if this statue was alive. That was an extremely mysterious feeling. It was clearly just a statue, and there weren't even any formation runes carved into it. He couldn't figure it out. Elder Long Chen, sect leader Tu Fang has instructed you to take it easy. As soon as they arrived at the Zhuanshan Super Monastery, an elder hastily opened his mouth. The rules had been broken for Long Chen to be promoted to the enforcement elder position. In truth, Long Chen was simply wearing that title. Each second, he had an urge to tear that title off himself. He didn't have time to deal with such trivial matters. Furthermore, the first monastery now only had so few people. Perhaps before Long Chen had joined, there might have been some disputes and nonsense present. But after Long Chen had joined, those troublesome people had already gone into another world. There wasn't even any need for law enforcement. The only reason Long Chen was given the law enforcement elder position was so he could represent Tu Fang to participate in the sect leader meeting. However, Tu Fang truly understood Long Chen, and before he had left, he had warned these elders to look after him. After all, young people tended to be a bit too brazen. Thus, he warned Long Chen, hoping for him to prepare himself. There were many internal disputes between the Super Monastery's 108 monasteries. After fighting for so many years, there was already a set of unwritten rules. Tu Fang was worried Long Chen might start facing off against others without awareness of those unwritten rules which might cause trouble. Don't worry, I know when to use hard force and when to use light force. Long Chen waved his hand. Those elders didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Who would believe such words from him? But they were already here, and so they could only follow Long Chen. In any case, they were just extras. They had only just arrived when a man ran over to lead them to the meeting place. But after that man saw Long Chen, he couldn't help being flabbergasted. May I ask, who are you? This is Long Chen our first monastery's enforcement elder. Our sect leader's health isn't good right now, and so Elder Long Chen has taken his place to represent the first monastery for the meeting, replied one of the elders by Long Chen's side. Long Chen? I haven't heard of him. How could someone at the early bone forging realm represent a monastery sect leader? The first monastery really has declined. A touch of ridicule appeared on that man's face. Pow! A hand directly slapped across his face, sending him flying. A miserable scream rang out, and his teeth were like blood-stained gems, flying gracefully through the air. Elder Long Chen, those elders couldn't help being dumbfounded. Didn't he say he would hold himself back a bit? This was what he meant when he said he knew how to use light force? I came here for the meeting, not to hear your taunts. A meridian opening trash dares insult me, said Long Chen icily, ignoring the elders' cries. You dare strike me. That man was just an elder within the super monastery. His status was not particularly high. However, his cultivation base had already reached the early meridian opening, so he was shocked and infuriated at being slapped by Long Chen. He roared furiously, but with his teeth scattered on the ground, and his tongue swelling from the slap, me ended up turning into meh. As a dog, you should properly lead the way. Don't say things you shouldn't say. Can you lead the way or not? If you can't, then scram back to your doghouse, snorted Long Chen. You must want to die. That man roared with fury, and he charged directly at Long Chen, a palm slamming towards his stomach. That power shook the void, 
and those elders behind Long Chen were all terrified. They might be at the peak of the bone forging realm and had tempered eight bones, but in the face of a meridian opening expert, they were powerless to resist. Long Chen sent his palm crashing into his opponent's palm. However, he used a skillful technique to strip his palm of any power, and no shock wave occurred. The man felt as if his palm had struck cotton. There was nowhere for his energy to go, and he almost coughed up blood from that feeling. Before he could react and think of what to do next, he felt a powerful force at the back of his scalp, forcing his head down. As his head was forced down, all he saw was a sturdy knee growing larger in his sight. Only at that moment did he realize something bad was about to happen. A sharp pain came from his nose and the sound of bones breaking rang out. The man was sent flying by Long Chen's knee, falling amongst a cluster of flowers a few dozen meters away. The originally snow-white flowers were splashed by his scarlet blood, causing them to look mournful yet beautiful. Oh, now I understand why flowers are red. One of the elders couldn't help sighing upon seeing those blood-stained flowers. One of the more experienced elders couldn't help grumbling. Elder Long Chen, didn't you say you knew how to use light force? Long Chen waved his hand, innocently saying, I said I'm someone who knows how to use hard force and light force. Look, I controlled my force perfectly. He's not dead, but not really alive. It's perfectly between hard and light force. But, ah, let it go. Although you're all older than me, that doesn't necessarily mean you can see things clearer than me. For such an idiot to come to find us for trouble, there's definitely someone behind him who sent him here to deliberately make it hard for us. TCH. What kind of joke was this supposed to be? Within the Super Monastery's 108 monasteries, there might be some people who don't know who the monastery head is, but there's definitely no one who doesn't know who I am. You didn't even see through such an obvious mistake? If I had just endured the words he said, he would have found other ways to provoke us. Do you have to wait until you can't endure it anymore before fighting? Sorry, but I'm not that kind of person. Once I finish slapping the left side of someone's face, if they then stick out the right side of their face for me, I'll definitely help slap them again. Look, there are already people coming over. This is all premeditated. Just don't say anything and quietly watch the play. As soon as Long Chen said this, several experts appeared, rushing over. The person at the front was a middle-aged man wearing the robes of the super monastery. His powerful aura marked him as a Xi'anchen expert. What person dares behave so badly in my Zhuanchen super monastery? Shouted the middle-aged man. Long Chen acted as if he didn't even see him, and simply continued walking forward. The elders behind him hurriedly lowered their heads, not saying a word and also acting as if they hadn't seen him. They had now experienced Long Chen's domineeringness, and they were also shocked by Long Chen's intelligence. With a single glance, he had seen through this scheme. His vision was truly frighteningly sharp. Hey, I'm talking to you. After beating someone, you want to just leave, raged the Xi'anchen expert. Seeing Long Chen was still ignoring him, he furiously extended his hand to block Long Chen and the others. Eh? Why are you blocking me? Asked Long Chen curiously. You injured someone and then want to just leave. Long Chen frowned slightly and asked one of the elders behind him. I can only understand human speech. Help me translate what he's saying. He said you injured someone, and he wants to find you for the bill. That elder turned green from being stared at by Long Chen and could only thicken his face and help translate for him. You, raged the Xi'anchen expert. Long Chen was actually cursing him as not being human. Long Chen didn't even glance at him, continuing to speak to that elder. Tell him I didn't hit anyone. I just taught a dog that wouldn't listen a lesson. If the super monastery has any objections, then call out the dog's master to talk. Otherwise, either attack or scram. After saying that, Long Chen ignored the man and brought his people away. The man was in a complete rage, clenching his teeth so hard he felt like they might break. Pointing at Long Chen's back, he shouted, Good, just wait, Long Chen, I'll report this matter to the higher-ups. Your first monastery should just wait for your punishment. Long Chen completely ignored him, treating him as air. That person's lungs almost exploded from rage. The highest realm of humiliating someone was to ignore them. If you cursed back at them, that was raising their status. Long Chen definitely wouldn't give him that kind of chance. If Long Chen couldn't see through such an obvious trap, then he wouldn't be Long Chen. So he handled it as directly as possible. Too lazy to waste more words on him. This was his first time in the Super Monastery. The Super Monastery had countless palace halls, and if he had come by himself, he definitely would have gotten lost. Luckily, 
Two of these elders had often accompanied Ling Yanzi to these annual meetings before, and so they knew the lay of the land. An hour later, Long Chen arrived at an immense palace that was incredibly spacious and bright. As soon as he entered the main hall, he saw 108 seats. Other than the first seat, the other seats already had people sitting on them. Those were naturally the 108 monastery sect leaders. Behind each sect leader stood several elders. It was unknown what they were whispering about. But when Long Chen appeared, they all turned silent, looking at him. It was absolutely silent. Hundreds of gazes focused on Long Chen, but those gazes weren't friendly. Quite a few of them even contained intense jealousy and hate. Of them all, the gazes from the second monastery and the new 108th monastery were the most intense. Long Chen smiled slightly, ignoring everyone's gazes. He walked over to the first seat. This was the throne of the first monastery and also the peak throne of all the 108 monasteries. Countless people longed to sit in that chair even in their dreams. Sitting on the chair, Long Chen didn't have any particularly special feeling. It wasn't even as comfortable as sitting on a grass meadow. But looking at those jealous gazes, no matter what, Long Chen still had to put on an extremely satisfied act. Nowadays, my monastery really has declined. For an incompetent youngster to take such a high position, it really makes a person sneer. A sinister voice rang out from the crowd. Chapter 496 Let me show you something translator. Born to be hearing that voice, the elders behind Long Chen were startled. They were targeting them so quickly and not concealing their hostility at all. Long Chen looked in the direction of the voice and saw the speaker came from the last place seat. It was one of the original experts from the first monastery. He recognized him as an elder who had stood behind Sha Kishin back then. He looked to be in his fifties. His eyes were filled with an icy ridicule as he glared straight at Long Chen. Although he hadn't said Long Chen's name, it was obvious to everyone present that he was targeting him. He had originally been an elder, but once Sha Kishin had died, he had smoothly succeeded his sect leader position. However, it seemed he wasn't satisfied with being the 108th monastery sect leader. Originally, the monastery had been split into two camps, one led by Sha Kishin and one led by the second monastery's Xiao Yang Chang. The two camps had fought covertly for countless years, but of the two camps, it was always Sha Kishin who had suppressed Xiao Yang Chang. As for Xiao Yang Chang, he had constantly been working to usurp Sha Kishin and gain the position of the first monastery. Other than those two camps, there were also some neutral monasteries that were ranked near the bottom. Because they were too weak, they weren't even worth the two camps' attention. They had all just been useless extras all those years. But before the two camp struggles had reached a conclusion, Long Chen had appeared and Sha Kishin had been killed, flabbergasting everyone. Although it wasn't Long Chen who had personally slain him, Sha Kishin had definitely died because of him. That development was out of anyone's expectations. However, despite that, the resources the first monastery possessed were too lucrative, and it caused the various sect leaders to turn red-eyed from greed. The glory of the first monastery practically drove them crazy. The original first monastery had gone from being emperors to being beggars. That kind of drop was almost enough for them to kill themselves from sullenness. Of their disciples, over half of them had directly left. As for the elders, they also felt as if the first monastery had declined, and unable to accept the facts. They went to go find a better job. The current 108th monastery sect leader was Sha Tonghe. He was Sha Kishin's younger cousin. When he had been appointed sect leader, he had furiously clenched his teeth, but he had been helpless about it. If everyone else hadn't practically pushed that position onto him, then seeing the 108th monastery's broken down state, he himself would have packed his things and left, but he hadn't given up. Although the first monastery had Long Chen, that didn't mean there wouldn't be chances in the future. Just as they were waiting for such an opportunity, they heard Ling Yanzi had given up his sect leader position and left, and even Kang Ming had left, throwing the mess onto Tu Fang. As a result, Sha Tonghe and Xiao Yang Chang had actually united all the various monastery sect leaders, wanting to erase any of Tu Fang's prestige, putting so much pressure on the first monastery that they would voluntarily give up their position. Tu Fang could also count as an old fox and he had long since seen some clues. He asked himself, could he really scheme better than these sect leaders who seemingly only schemed all day? That really wasn't the area he specialized in, and so he had had Long Chen go instead. There was an excellent expression for this, wicked people are best handled by wicked people. Sect leader Shah's words are reasonable. After all, sect leaders have to embody the prestige of the monasteries. 
Not only do they need integrity, talent, and a combat ability that can convince the masses, but they also need rich management experience. For some people, who have only just gotten a bit of fame, to think they can sit on the same level as true sect leaders truly makes a person despise them, sneered the seventh monastery sect leader. He hasn't even grown any hair on his chin, yet he dares take the sect leader position. At such a young age, his skin really is thick. I suppose that's what it means for a calf to not know how to fear the tiger. Another sect leader also tossed in some words. These people's words caused the hearts of the elders behind Long Chen to sink. Under Sha Tonghe and Xiao Yang Chang's pressure, all the sect leaders were standing together. Although Sha Tonghe wasn't as powerful as Sha Kishan had been, he was still extremely strong. My hair hasn't grown out? Makes sense. Makes sense. You've grown out so much hair, but does that have the slightest use? Could it be that by growing out your hair, you can become a sect leader? Then according to your theory, why don't you go raise some pigs? They have plenty of hair, so I suppose they would be even more suited to be sect leaders than you. Long Chen disdainfully looked at them. They wanted to play a game of tongs? Then he would play them to death. As soon as he had arrived here, he had sensed the atmosphere was wrong. All of them were glaring at him, but most of them were people he had never even had any interactions with. If Long Chen couldn't see through the truth from that, then he wouldn't be Long Chen. Ignorant brat, what I was talking about was having integrity and experience. The experience to manage a sect don't twist my words, sneered Sha Tonghe. Long Chen glanced sideways at him. Well, more accurately, he couldn't see him all the way at the end without looking sideways. Experience? Does that kind of plaything have a use? Oh, I see. Your experiences tell you to teach your disciples how to use insidious schemes to hurt other people. Did you think that if they spent all day scheming against their own people, then they would be able to become experts? Did you think that just because you're older, you're wiser? You spend all day caring only about your status, doing inhuman things because of jealousy and for your own profit, all with no sense of shame. But now you still have the face to talk about integrity with me? How could the word integrity be used to describe the slightest part of a piece of sheet like you? Did you think that just because you're sitting here and wearing clothes that you're better than a dog? Retorted Long Chen. His words made Sha Tonghe tremble with rage. You, you're just spouting obscenities. You're lacking decorum. Sha Tonghe pointed furiously at Long Chen, not knowing what to say. Just let it go. Do you even know what decorum is? For some profit, you can sell out your conscience, giving up all of your face. There are some idiots here who should listen well. Don't make any plans to target my first monastery. The previous matter can count as settled. So I won't bicker with you about how you targeted me in secret in the past. But from now on, if someone targets my first monastery, if anyone dares try to hold back our progress, the consequences will be grave. What I say, I can do. If anyone of you wants to become a second shock Kishan, come and try me at any time. Long Chen's icy gaze swept over everyone. The elders behind him felt their hearts pound. Long Chen's words were just too domineering, and even them, old seniors whose hot-blooded times had already passed, felt a battle intense or within them. Although they were no longer young, they had once been in the springtime of their youth as well, but they had never seen a youth as domineering as Long Chen. At the early bone-forging realm, he dared face off against sect leaders and say such ruthless words, but no one dared doubt his determination. As Long Chen's past victories were perfect evidence, everyone's expressions changed as his words were too ruthless. He was clearly threatening them, which was an absolute humiliation. You, you foul-mouthed brat, when we swept through the world, your grandpa hadn't even been born, raged Sha Tonghe. It had to be known that they were Xi'anshan experts and had already lived for centuries. Someone like Ling Yunzi, who was only just over a hundred years old, was already one of the youngest of them. For someone like Long Chen, who wasn't even 20 years old, to talk like this to them was a vicious slap in their faces. Is being old so amazing? That just means you'll be buried in the ground sooner. Furthermore, with your conduct, how did you sweep through the world? It's not that I want to look down on you, but I really am looking down on you. With your kind of character, even with the supermonastery's protection, all you know how to do is abuse your power and bully the weak. If you dared to leave the supermonastery's protection, then with your ugly ass face, you definitely wouldn't survive for half a day in the world before someone beat you to death, said Long Chen. Go to hell. Do you believe me when I say I can crush you like an ant? Raged Sha Tonghe. Back when he had been in the first monastery, he had been a powerful figure, 
and no one had dared be impolite to him. Now that Long Chen repeatedly gave him slaps in the face, his killing intent soared. Seeing Sha Tong Hei on the verge of going berserk, Xiao Yang Chang smiled faintly. He hadn't said anything from the start, because he knew he didn't need to do anything. Someone else would naturally take the lead. As compared to him, Sha Tong Hei hated Long Chen far more. His prediction ended up being spot on. He hadn't even had to do anything before Sha Tong Hei flew into a rage. That refreshed him greatly, and inside, he sneered at Sha Tong Hei for being an idiot. He was far too lacking compared to Sha Kishan. Hearing what he said, Long Chen stood up, with his hands clasped behind his back. He left his position and slowly walked towards Sha Tong Hei. You said you can crush me like an ant? I really do doubt those words. I want to give it a try, he said. Everyone was silent now. They were all startled by Long Chen's actions Noveloon.com Although Long Chen had killed Xi'anchen experts before, that was because of the earth flame and that he had caught them off guard. In a head-on clash, he would definitely die. And yet, just like this, he swaggered over to Sha Tong Hei, causing everyone to be at a loss. Long Chen was representing the first monastery, and this kind of conduct violated the no fighting except with words rule between sect leaders. Long Chen arrived in front of Sha Tong Hei. The two of them were less than three inches from each other. Everyone's hearts clenched inside. They wouldn't really fight now, right? I, Long Chen, have come. I want to see how you crush me to death. Long Chen stared straight at Sha Tong Hei. Sha Tong Hei wasn't tall, and he was half a head shorter than Long Chen. Now Long Chen was truly looking down on him. HMPH, I'm too lazy to quibble with a brat. That would make others laugh at me, sneered Sha Tong Hei. It wasn't that he didn't want to attack but that he didn't dare. This was the super monastery, and the monastery head was overseeing this place. He didn't dare be unbridled here. After all, Long Chen represented the first monastery. All right then, then let me show you something. What is this? Long Chen extended a hand, his five fingers open. HMPH, a cat claw, sneered Sha Tong Hei. Wrong answer, pow. A palm streaked through the air in a beautiful arc, striking Sha Tong Hei's face like lightning. Chapter 497 Slapping a Sect Leader's Face Translator Born to be before Sha Tong Hei could react, he was sent flying by Long Chen's slap. Together with his chair, he tumbled into the distance. Everyone was stunned. This development had come too suddenly. No one had expected Long Chen to take the initiative to strike and to use such a humiliating attack. Your answer was wrong. This is called a large slap in the face, said Long Chen. The elders that had come with Long Chen were all dumbfounded. They were definitely screwed. Long Chen had provoked a disaster. Long Chen, go to hell. Sha Tong Hei crawled up from the ground. A large handprint was deeply imprinted in his face, and the stinging pain made him roar furiously as he charged at Long Chen. Idiot. Do you want to try laying a finger on me? Long Chen didn't dodge, nor did he raise any defenses. Sha Tong Hei might be furious, but Long Chen's words made him stop right in front of him, not daring to strike. He didn't touch Long Chen. But Long Chen didn't stand on courtesy, and another large hand ruthlessly slapped across the other side of Sha Tong Hei's face. A clear sound rang out, causing everyone to tremble. Although the person being slapped was Sha Tong Hei, they all felt a sympathetic pain on their own faces. Each of Long Chen's slaps was more ruthless than the last. Sha Tong Hei almost fainted from being struck. Although Long Chen had yet to temper his bones, he had reached the bone forging realm now, and his strength had reached an abnormal level. If it was a meridian opening expert who was struck by him, a single slap might kill that person. But even as a Xi'anchen expert, Sha Tong Hei's skin didn't have that much defensive ability. His head was buzzing, and it was only after a moment that he recovered. Fuck, how calamitous. Long Chen suddenly cursed, looking at his palm with a disgusted expression. Everyone saw there was a layer of something white on his palm. It looked very similar to lard used for stir fry. Looking from his palm to Sha Tong Hei's greasy face, their expressions became odd. A single slap ends up drawing out all this grease. Just how much grease? 1. Did you wipe in the first monastery? Long Chen took out a handkerchief from his spatial ring and wiped his hand, cursing the entire time. Even normal grease on a palm would make a person irritated. Now, Long Chen felt a bit nauseated, even beginning to regret slapping him. Only at this time did Sha Tong Hei crawl up from the ground again, tottering back and forth. Suddenly, Killing intent erupted from him and he released his aura. Fat pig, I'd advise you not to do anything stupid. If you don't activate your Xi'anchen power, I can slap you to death with ease. 
But if you do activate your Xianchen power, then that would destroy the Zhuanchen pavilion, and it would be the monastery head who slaps you to death. Long Chen didn't even look at Sha Tonghe, simply continuing to clean his hand. You, PFFT. Sha Tonghe coughed up a mouthful of blood from fury. He had never felt this stifled in his life. Long Chen's physical body was incredibly powerful, and it was just like he said. If he didn't use his Xianchen power, he was helpless to do anything to him. But if he did use his Xianchen power, this entire palace hall would be instantly destroyed. This was the Zhuanchen Pavilion, a building that had been built at the very start of the Zhuanchen Supermonastery, and similar to the ancestral statue, it was a symbol of the Supermonastery. If he destroyed it, then the monastery head would definitely kill him. So he wanted to fight but couldn't, and he wanted to endure but couldn't. Perhaps the fact that he hadn't fainted from fury was enough to show he had a powerful mental strength. You really aren't educated. Looks like all your years were wasted. Don't you know the Zhuanchen Pavilion is an important area and it is forbidden to crap here? Looking at the blood on the ground, a disgusted expression appeared on Long Chen's face, as if he was looking at a pile of dog sheet. You, before he could say anything else, Sha Tonghe felt his key and blood surging again, and he almost coughed up more blood. He hastily circulated his key to suppress it. All right, I'm glad we've settled this misunderstanding. After all, we're all members of the Supermonastery, and it's best for us to be peaceful and not bicker over minor matters. My Zhuanchen Supermonastery is a prestigious sect, an example for the righteous path. Sha Tonghe, I won't bother with how rude you were to me. Long Chen returned to his seat, acting extremely magnanimous, but everyone was looking at him oddly. After slapping someone in the face, he then said he forgave them and acted so highly principled, as if he was so magnanimous even after suffering wrongs? Was there really someone so shameless in this world? Even so, the imposingness Long Chen had displayed had completely intimidated them. They were all Xianchen experts, and they could tell his physical body was too terrifying. That made many of them feel a chill inside. They had noticed Long Chen had already advanced to the bone-forging realm, but he was far stronger than any of them would have expected. The power of his physical body had already surpassed their understanding, adding on an earth flame to protect himself. There really was no one who could threaten him in the same realm. Quite a few of them had already given up any hopes of defeating him. Wasn't being enemies with a monster with limitless potential like Long Chen simply foolish? Long Chen, just wait. Sha Tonghe's eyes were practically spitting flames as he clenched his teeth and pointed at Long Chen. Suddenly, Long Chen stood up, causing everyone to jump in fright. Thinking that Long Chen was about to attack again, Sha Tonghe's expression changed and he retreated a few steps, taking a defensive posture. But then Long Chen just stretched his waist and sat back down without glancing at Sha Tonghe. He even took a napping posture. Too evil. No one would play people like this. Everyone couldn't help but sigh. Looking at Sha Tonghe, whose face had turned the same color as a pig, they involuntarily felt sympathy for him. If anyone else had been in his position, the result would probably have been the same. Without using Xianchen power, they were unable to defaturing Long Chen. But if they did use Xianchen power, that would be throwing their lives away. At this time, Xiao Yang Chang also didn't say anything. He had now experienced just how difficult Long Chen was to handle. He was practically completely unrestrained and out of control. For the next while, the atmosphere was exceedingly odd. Originally, Everyone had already agreed to suppress the first monastery and erase any of their prestige, but Tu Fang hadn't come. Instead, it was Long Chen, and the ones to lose face were them. That result was not something in their calculations. The monastery head has arrived. Suddenly, a cry rang out and everyone stood up. Adopt the platform in front of them. The curtains were pulled apart, and Xu Wuhan appeared in front of them. Behind Xu Wuhan was a white-haired elder. Long Chen recognized him as the other assistant monastery head who had opened the Jiuli secret realm. However, he had heard that this elder had entered seclusion after opening the secret realm. For him to appear here was a bit puzzling. Xu Wuhan's gaze swept over everyone. When it landed on Long Chen, an unnoticeable humor appeared in her eyes, but she quickly suppressed it. Xu Wuhan's position was like the imperial throne of a palace. The only difference was that here, everyone else had chairs as well. Everyone can sit. We'll be doing the same thing as always. Report your gains and anything you've learned in the past year for everyone, said Xu Wuhan, sitting down. Monastery head, please help me get justice. Suddenly, Sha Tonghe let out a mournful cry. Oh, aren't you sect leader Sha? Your face, 
Shu Wuhan looked at the deep handprints on his face with confusion, but Long Chen could see a touch of ridicule deep within Shu Wuhan's eyes. At the same time, he noticed the muscles under her ears twitched a few times. Others might not have noticed the change in Shu Wuhan, but it was unable to escape Long Chen, who possessed a perfect understanding of the human body. Those muscles under the ear followed the cheeks and would activate when a person smiled. When someone forcibly held back a smile, it would cause those muscles to shake ever so slightly, because that was the physiological reaction, similar to a conditioned reflex. It didn't matter how high Shu Wuhan's cultivation base was, Long Chen had still managed to see through that change. Most likely, the monastery had already arrived a while ago. She only revealed herself when the play was over. Long Chen couldn't help smiling. Was this what it meant for an old person to still possess a child's heart? But that couldn't be blamed on Shu Wuhan. Those two handprints that were deeply imprinted on Sha Tonghei's face truly were comical. For Shu Wuhan to know what had happened but still act like she didn't, it was no wonder she had an urge to smile. This was done by that despicable brat Long Chen, complained Sha Tonghei almost crying tears of grief. What? But you're a Xi'anchen expert, while Long Chen has only just advanced to bone forging. That really is hard to believe. Xu Wuhan looked from Sha Tonghei to Long Chen with an expression of disbelief. Monastery head, this is absolutely true. Every sect leader and elder present can testify that it was Long Chen who struck me, said Sha Tonghei. I can testify it was Long Chen who struck him. Xiao Yang Chang was the first to stand up, following Xiao Yang Chang. Other sect leaders also immediately stood up to testify that it was done by Long Chen. Long Chen's gaze swept over those testifiers. He didn't say a single word, but his gaze caused all of them to shiver. But they had already stood up, and there was no way they could take their words back. Furthermore, the fact that Long Chen had struck Sha Tonghei was an indisputable fact, so it wasn't as if they were lying. However, there were over 20 sect leaders who had stood up but didn't say anything. They had all originally been roped in by Sha Tonghei, but now they didn't like the way things were developing, and so they decided not to say anything. In any case, there were already enough people testifying. Holding back a little might end up protecting themselves from disaster. Seeing that many people stood up to testify, Shu Wuhan's expression sunk and she harshly shouted, Long Chen, how brazen. You actually dared maliciously injure someone in an important place like the Zhuangshan Pavilion? Do you accept your crimes? 1. The term for Greece can also mean ill-gained profit. Chapter 498 Everyone Stunned Translator Born to be Shu Wuhan's shout caused Long Chen to jump. He hadn't expected the amiable Shu Wuhan to suddenly turn hostile. That made Long Chen a bit puzzled. Was she planning on punishing him? Long Chen, I'm asking you a question. Why are you just looking at me? Asked Shu Wuhan icily. Ah, uh, just now I was a bit too startled and forgot what you asked. Can Monastery Head please repeat it, said Long Chen apologetically. He was unable to guess her intentions. Seeing Long Chen's sluggish expression, Xu Wuhan almost laughed. But on the outside, she still acted icily and said, I asked, why would you maliciously injure someone in the Zhuangshan Pavilion? Who gave you such nerve? Now Long Chen couldn't help smirking inside. He finally understood that Xu Wuhan was saying this to help exonerate himself. For him to have hit someone here had encroached upon her prestige as monastery head. It was no wonder she had to act angry. But unless Long Chen had raised down the entire Zhuangshan pavilion, that kind of offense was not worth the death penalty. At worst, she would just have to severely punish Long Chen. That was what all these sect leaders wanted to see, as Long Chen was just too fierce, and they needed to suppress him. The maliciously injure someone she said was extremely brilliant. All Long Chen had to say was that it was Sha Tonghei who had provoked him first, and he had only attacked because of his anger. Like that, the responsibility would be split between the two, and no matter what Sha Tonghei said, it was impossible to dispute that. After all, why would Long Chen only strike him but no one else? Once that was settled, Long Chen's punishment would become extremely trivial, and this matter would be over. However, this light punishment would probably require him to be imprisoned for a few days and Long Chen didn't want to waste that time. He shook his head and said, Monastery head is wrong. I didn't maliciously injure anyone. This is all just a misunderstanding. Seeing Long Chen had instantly understood her intentions, Xu Wuhan relaxed slightly. However, she still acted icy. Misunderstanding? What misunderstanding could allow you to slap someone in the face twice? Do you think I'm so easy to fool? Although Xu Wuhan's expression was icy, Long Chen knew that was just for everyone to see. 
After all, she was the monastery head, and she couldn't obviously act biased towards Long Chen. She needed a justification to help him. Monastery head, this is really just a misunderstanding. Let me explain, said Long Chen. All right, I really want to hear what kind of misunderstanding would be this fierce in truth. Xu Wuhan was also a bit bewildered. She had clearly already given Long Chen an escape route. After slapping a sect leader in the face twice, just being imprisoned for a few days couldn't even count as punishment. She wouldn't actually make it hard on him. At most, he would have to cultivate here for a few days. But it seemed Long Chen had his own plans. She was truly curious just what method Long Chen had to exonerate himself. In truth, it was like this. Sect leader Sha Tonghe and myself were having a scientific discussion of whether a human could be crushed to death like an ant. Sect leader Sha Tonghe first came up with the grand concept, thinking that humans could be crushed like ants, but I felt great doubt for his theory. To sacrifice myself for a grand cultivation discovery is something I would be proud to do, and so I decided to take the risk to test sect leader Sha Tonghe's theory. But although I was brave enough to test it, it seemed sect leader Sha Tonghe began to feel his theory was flawed, and so he didn't dare try it. However, I felt that theories have to be tested, that putting theories into practice is the only way to verify them. I didn't want such an amazing topic of discussion to end just like that. I'd rather see it to the end, and so I proceeded with the discussion with sect leader Sha Tonghe. Up to now, everyone was still completely lost as to what Long Chen was saying. What absolute nonsense. You're just quibbling. It was clearly you who hit me. Raged Sha Tonghe. Don't be so impatient. I'm not finished talking. Since it seems Monastery Head also doesn't fully understand. Then let me give Monastery Head a demonstration. Then the misunderstanding will be resolved. The first theory was something sect leader Sha Tonghe came up with. A person can be crushed to death like an ant. At that time. I raised my doubts and even risked my own body as evidence for sect leader Sha Tonghe. But when I wanted to prove it, sect leader Sha Tonghe retreated. In my opinion, it seems his theory was flawed, but he didn't want to admit it. And so, I brought up another topic. I asked sect leader Sha Tonghe, what is this? After saying that, Long Chen turned to Sha Tonghe, extended a hand with his fingers open. He asked him, sect leader Sha Tonghe, what is this? Without hesitation. Sha Tonghe snorted, a cat claw, pow, a large hand ruthlessly slapped across Sha Tonghe's face with a crisp sound, Sha Tonghe was knocked onto the ground, wrong, this is a slap in the face, said Long Chen, Long Chen, you are courting death, being slapped again, Sha Tonghe's hair stood on end, he had already forgotten the monastery head was present, and he charged at Long Chen furiously, Long Chen once more gave him a slap in the face, one that was extremely ruthless and sent him flying, because sect leader Sha Tonghe refused to accept his error, I could only use this evidence to back up the truth. This truly isn't a cat claw, but a slap in the face. Monastery head, now you should fully understand that this really was just a misunderstanding. After sending Sha Tonghe flying, Long Chen turned to Shu Wuhan with an aggrieved expression. At this time, Sha Tonghe had just stood back up. Hearing Long Chen's words, he immediately coughed up a mouthful of blood. Long Chen suddenly gave him a thumbs up praising him, what a perfect demonstration of what happened back then, I admit, back then, when I saw sect leader Sha Tonghe crap all over the palace hall, I truly was a bit too aggressive and sneered at him too much, let me apologize for that right now, but just because I'm apologizing doesn't mean I did anything wrong, it's simply because I feel like we are all members of one sect, and we should all work together peacefully, it was just a misunderstanding, now that it's been resolved, I hope that since we're all members of the same sect, we should focus on being harmonious and not quibble over minor matters all day. After all, my Zhuanshan Super Monastery is a grand sect, an example for the righteous path. Due to this, I won't quibble with Sha Tonghe over his rude behavior to me. Long Chen spread his arms, acting as if he didn't mind having to suffer a slight loss. Everyone was stunned. Just now. They had personally witnessed Long Chen repeatedly slap Sha Tonghe's face in front of the monastery head. Not only was Sha Tonghe dizzy, but they were all dizzy as well. Just as everyone was dumbfounded, Shu Wuhan suddenly disappeared, leaving behind only the assistant monastery head, who now had an odd expression. This assistant monastery head looked from Long Chen to Sha Tonghe, who was on the verge of fainting. He didn't know what to say. Assistant monastery head, do you see? 
Long Chen is absolutely out of control and even dares be so brazen in front of you. How could our Zhuangshan Super Monastery accept such a fierce and malicious disciple? Sha Tonghe implored to the assistant monastery head, weeping tears. This time, his tears weren't fake. In all his life, he had never felt such grievance. Furthermore, it was a grievance which didn't even allow him to strike back. He felt so sullen that he wanted to kill himself. Cough. This matter is a bit hard to determine. We should wait for the monastery head to return. Most likely, the monastery head merely had something urgent to do but will quickly return. Coughed the assistant monastery head awkwardly. Looking at Long Chen, who was acting like this was none of his business, he sighed. He had lived for a long time, but he had never seen someone like Long Chen. That made him sigh with emotion. The world truly was filled with marvels. Suddenly, space shook slightly and Chu Wuhan reappeared in front of them. She gravely said, Just now, someone touched upon my supermonastery's restrictive formations. I went to investigate, but I didn't find the slightest trace. However, I suspect some powerful enemy was trying to stealthily infiltrate the supermonastery. They were too strong for me to even catch them. What? Everyone was shocked. Someone dared infiltrate the supermonastery? Could it be an expert from the corrupt path? But that kind of possibility was extremely small. In all of history, the battles between the righteous and corrupt path were only between disciples. If the higher-ups fought, that would be a real war. You don't need to be nervous. Perhaps I am just too paranoid. Or perhaps the formations have become loose after so many years of disrepair. Let's just continue from our previous subject. Xu Wuhan shrugged. Stopping everyone's whispering, looking at Long Chen and Sha Tonghe, she didn't know what to say. Monastery head, it seems you still aren't clear on what happened. This can't be blamed on you, as just now, my recount wasn't clear enough. How about this? Let me demonstrate it again for you from the start. That way you'll be able to fully understand what happened and be able to make the best judgment. After saying that, Long Chen turned to Sha Tonghe. There's no need to demonstrate. I. I admit that Long Chen didn't maliciously injure anyone. We were just discussing theories. Sha Tonghe's words caused everyone to be dumbfounded. But seeing the veins bulging on his forehead and his eyes that seemed to the spitting flames, everyone was well aware of the truth. Long Chen's methods were too vicious. Simply by refusing to admit it was anything but a discussion. Sha Tonghe couldn't do anything to him. In fact, if he continued to quibble, he would very likely continue to be beaten. So he directly gave up and simply remembered this enmity in his heart. Xu Wuhan was also dumbfounded. Seeing Long Chen's disappointed expression, she couldn't help but feel it was funny. This fellow really did know how to con people. No matter what reason it was, to strike someone in the Zhuangshan Pavilion is still an offense. When this meeting is over, stay behind. Long Chen, said Xu Wuhan icily. Her words made Sha Tonghe incredibly grateful, and he immediately knelt on the ground. Monastery head is wise. Xu Wuhan icily glared at him. Although Long Chen might have gone too far in this matter, don't think I'm unaware of the real cause. Competition is based on power, and if you want to fight, you should fight openly. If you simply want to use despicable schemes and violate the rules, then don't blame me for being vicious. Was Sha Kishan's death not enough? That made everyone's hearts turn cold, and they didn't dare make another sound. The annual meeting continued just like that. This meeting was simply a summary of the year's development, as well as the prospects of the next year. Having to listen to each sect summary made Long Chen incredibly drowsy. Six hours later, the meeting finally concluded. Everyone got up and left, leaving behind only Long Chen. A delighted smile appeared on Sha Tonghe and Xiao Yang Chang's faces. Chapter 499 Ling Yunzi's Challenge Translator Born to be you rotten brat, you almost made me do something shameful, within a private room. Xu Wuhan was rebuking Long Chen. Currently, she no longer had any of her austere dignity and seemed more like a big sister that was reprimanding Long Chen. This was Xu Wuhan's private cultivation room. She had never had anyone else in here. Long Chen was the first. But as soon as Long Chen entered, she unleashed a scolding on him. Only now did Long Chen find out that the reason Xu Wuhan had had to leave in the middle of the meeting wasn't because someone had touched the restrictive formations. That had just been an excuse to cover up that she hadn't been able to hold back her laughter. As the monastery head, if she were to laugh in front of everyone like that, it would truly be lacking propriety and dignity. So now she was scolding Long Chen. But as she scolded, a laugh occasionally sneaked out. She shook her head. You really are a devil. Is there ever a time you're afraid? 
Long Chen's nerve was really too great to repeatedly give Sha Tonghe slaps in the face. If Sha Tonghe ended up going berserk, losing all reasoning and not giving a damn about the consequences, then Long Chen would very likely be instantly killed. Of course, there are times when I'm afraid, but I definitely wouldn't be afraid of them. A bunch of petty cowards like them don't have the courage to kill me, and even if they wanted to kill me, then if I couldn't beat them, couldn't I still run? I don't believe that you would just watch as your own house was torn apart. That would just be slapping yourself in the face. Long Chen laughed. Little fellow, you really are wicked. Even I've been included in your calculations. Are you so sure that I would protect you? Asked Xu Wuhan. Of course. What happened just now was just some trivial matter. But I know if something happened, you'd protect me. Or you wouldn't have saved me back then. Long Chen smiled. Ah, you. Sometimes I feel you're smart enough to scare me, but sometimes you're foolish enough to scare me as well. I still don't know whether or not you're truly smart or stupid, sighed Shu Wuhan. Me? I have a smart side and a stupid side. However, my smart side is reserved for my enemies, while my foolish side is reserved for my brothers. Shu Wuhan's heart shook ever so slightly, as Long Chen's words were indeed true. He had an intelligence and a vision that could easily see through all schemes, but even so... He would always do some foolish things that others couldn't comprehend. What happened previously in the first monastery was a perfect example. By going to the first monastery, he had just been accompanying everyone to die. That kind of conduct was idiotic, and extremely so. But that had been what Long Chen had done. That made it so Xu Wuhan was unable to tell just what was inside Long Chen's head. Furthermore, his foolish conduct had ended up infecting others as well. As sect leader, Ling Yanzi had actually started a slaughter just for one disciple, killing multiple sect leaders without caring about his own life. Perhaps sometimes foolishness was just part of human nature, and sometimes, it was the most precious thing. Then sect leader, by having me stay behind, are you planning on punishing me? Asked Long Chen. I really do need to punish you. You need to reserve yourself more, or I really won't be able to have any more peaceful days, said Xu Wuhan harshly. Hearing that, Long Chen relaxed a great deal, so all she was doing was making life a bit more difficult for him. Long Chen, I look very favorably upon you. Once you grow up, you'll definitely be a world-shaking figure. But your temperament, Xu Wuhan involuntarily shook her head. I'm just like that. Unless I die, I won't change myself, said Long Chen. He also felt a bit powerless about that. He had to be like this, as this was the path of the nine-star hegemon body art. Since he had stepped onto this path, he had to advance without fear. Lu Fanger and Ye's Hikyu's deaths had made it completely clear to him that if he continued to deny the direction of the nine-star hegemon body art, he would end up losing even more companions. Now there was hope for Ye's Hikyu to revive, but Lu Fanger was forever dead. Although Lu Fanger had said she was just an extra, an accessory to Men Qi, she had still been a pure-hearted woman. She had liked a person, and she had dared to admit it. In the beginning, Long Chen really hadn't completely approved of that feeling, but when Lu Fanger had died, he had felt a heart-wrenching pain. Her death made him completely realize that he couldn't be so cowardly. Otherwise, everybody beside him would die one by one. So now, whatever Long Chen wanted to do, he would do. He would not submit to any restrictions. He needed to nurture his domineeringness, to use his bloody methods to intimidate all enemies. When Long Chen had made that determination, he had felt his mental realm instantly become completely clear. He was able to see things clearer and with more depth. All right, it's not like I want to change you. Are you aware that before Ling Yunzi left, he came to see me? Xu Wuhan hesitated for a moment before saying this. The sect leader came to see you? Oh, could it be? Long Chen looked at Xu Wuhan. She appeared to be only 25 to 26 years old, and she was extremely beautiful. You, you little rascal. You really are looking for a beating. Where did your thoughts end up wandering? Seeing Long Chen's odd expression, Xu Wuhan raged. Ling Yanzi and I are not from the same generation. Why is your head only filled with such crazy thoughts? Oh, then that really is a pity. Long Chen scratched his head, feeling that it was regretful. You, TCH. When I made my name, Ling Yanzi had yet to be born in the world. Furthermore, as people who chase after cultivation, how could we throw our mental realm into disorder just for some romantic feelings? Xu Wuhan shook her head, but a sliver of sadness appeared in her eyes. Long Chen's heart shook. Perhaps Xu Wuhan was also someone with her own story. He hastily shut his mouth. It was best not to know that much gossip. 
or you might end up being killed to keep silent. When Ling Yanzi came to see me, he came to challenge me to a battle. Xu Wuhan smiled slightly. What? Then wasn't he just looking to be crushed? A Xianchen expert had challenged a sea expansion expert? Although Long Chen didn't know what kind of concept a sea expansion expert was, when Xu Wuhan had appeared back then, heaven and earth had trembled in front of her, and a terrifying pressure had enveloped the entire monastery. Under that pressure, Long Chen had felt himself to be only an ant without any ability to resist. As for those Xianchen experts, although they could also kill him, their pressure was far from lacking compared to Xu Wuhan's. There was really no comparison. Ling Yanzi had gone to challenge Xu Wuhan? Was he trying to ascend to the heavens? As a result, I lost, said Xu Wuhan. What? Long Chen almost jumped up. How was that possible? We each only made one move. I lost that move, and we didn't make a second move, as there was no more meaning behind fighting. He was just giving me a display, said Xu Wuhan. Displaying what? He said he had obtained immense benefits from you, and he wanted to show his achievements to me. That sword attack of his was truly brilliant. In the Xianchen realm, perhaps there is no one who can receive a single attack from him anymore. That's why he left. Xu Wuhan sighed. Shock appearing in her eyes as it seemed she sank back into her memories of his sword. That sword attack had contained a destructive aura that could destroy the blue dome of the sky. That was a sword that could end the heavens, end the earth, end gods, and end devils. Although it was just an embryonic sword intent, it already contained a will to destroy everything. Even Xu Wuhan had been astonished by that sword's power. She had no idea how he had comprehended such a thing. Ah, uh, I'm a bit bewildered, said Long Chen. So even you have times when you're bewildered? Good, then stay confused. Xu Wuhan laughed. In truth, Ling Yanzi did this for my benefit. He hoped I would treat you well. If I did, I would definitely gain a profit in the future. Long Chen couldn't help being moved. Before leaving, Ling Yanzi had still been worried for him and had gone to Xu Wuhan to ask her to look after him. However, Long Chen didn't know just how incredibly daring Ling Yanzi had been. He had actually absorbed the destructive will from the lightning tribulation that had been attacking his body. That kind of energy was something that would destroy a person's Dao foundation once it was absorbed into the body. A single mistake would turn a person into a cripple. But Ling Yanzi had actually stored a thread of that destructive energy in his body for him to comprehend the true essence of the Annihilation Dao. By merging it into his sword Dao, he ended up creating a unique Annihilation Sword Dao. After comprehending the Annihilation Sword Dao, Ling Yanzi had seen a vaster sky for himself, and so he had gone to pursue greater heights. But he had still been worried for Long Chen. Although he knew divergence wouldn't die to the hands of humans, that was just something said in legends. He didn't want to hear the news that Long Chen had died while he was pursuing greater heights of his sword Dao. So he had gone to see Xu Wuhan. No matter what, Xu Wuhan was someone who had saved his life, and he also felt she wasn't a bad person. He had shown off the power of his sword to tell her she would benefit from looking after Long Chen. Then I'll have to thank Monastery Head. Long Chen hastily thanked her. Little fellow, your skin really is thick. I haven't even said whether or not I would look after you. Aren't you saying thanks too early? Laughed Xu Wuhan. You've long since been looking after me. If it hadn't been for you, I would already be stirring up trouble in another world. So, of course, I have to thank you. Long Chen smiled. You really know how to talk. It's no wonder those girls are all willing to stay by your side. Xu Wuhan rolled her eyes at him, shaking her head. But let me warn you. Don't think that just because I'm looking after you, you can do whatever you want. Don't stir up any trouble or I'll have you imprisoned. After their two interactions, she was well aware of Long Chen's fearless nature. He was capable of doing the craziest things. In front of her, he had even dared slap a sect leader multiple times. Even after living for so long, Xu Wuhan had never heard of anyone doing such a thing. However, not only had Long Chen done it, but he had even caused his opponent to willingly admit defeat and give up on investigating the truth. Such a person would either not cause any trouble, or cause enough trouble to bring down the very heavens. She had to first warn him harshly, or else he really might end up ascending to the heavens, and not in a good way. I had you stay behind this time because I have some news I want to tell you. Do you want to know about Yun Luo and the others? Chapter 500 News Translator Born to be Long Chen's eyes brightened. Previously, he had caused such a huge disturbance in the Jiuli secret realm. The top experts of the righteous and corrupt paths had been cut down like weeds in front of him. 
It was precisely because the ones attacking Long Chen had been the ones who thought themselves mighty and supreme that he had killed so many top experts. Now, quite a while had passed. Long Chen really did want to know how those fellows were doing. Unfortunately, Long Chen didn't have any way of getting news about them. Xu Wuhan looked at Long Chen and sighed. Little fellow, you really are ruthless enough. Currently, my Zhuangshan Super Monastery is being targeted from all sides. Countless sects are criticizing me for harboring a murderer. There are even sects who have secretly brought your matter up to the Zhuangshan Dao sect. Long Chen had killed too many righteous experts. Just the chosen had to be counted in the hundreds. As for the peak experts, not many had been left. It could be said the sects of the seven prefectures had been gravely wounded this time. If that had happened because of the corrupt path, then they wouldn't have anything to complain about. But they had died to Long Chen, which was something they were unable to accept. They actually have the face to criticize others? So only they can kill me, but I can't kill them, sneered Long Chen. But you were too ruthless. In the end, they were already defeated and fleeing, but you still chased them down. That's why they're dissatisfied, said Xu Wuhan. Dissatisfied? Do I care about their dissatisfaction? TCH. They were lucky. In order to kill Yun Luo and chase down Yun Wushuang, I let so many of them escape. If the exit had opened just an hour later, I would have made all of them forever rest in the secret realm. Each of them has to face the consequences of their own actions. They feel wronged. But then when Lu Fang Er and Ye's Hikyu died, who was I supposed to complain to? What about the disciples who died from the Huaian sect and Mogate? What about their grievance? TCH. Those people are all idiots. Not killing them would be unworthy of their idiotic intelligence. Long Chen became more and more furious as he thought of that battle. His killing intent instantly soared, and he wished he could revive those idiots just so he could kill them again. Long Chen had never gone to provoke anyone, but because of a single oral promise, those idiots had been blinded by greed, selling out their conscience to raise the butcher's knife against members of the same path. Now that most of them were killed, they actually wanted to complain? They went to report it to the higher ops? Long Chen's rage soared. It's fine. Don't have such a fiery temperament at such a young age. Currently, the righteous path is already like this, and nobody can change it. If you continue like this, you'll end up suffering greatly, consoled Xu Wuhan. She couldn't help but sigh. Long Chen truly was foolish sometimes. Once someone touched one of the people by his side, he would forget all about his intelligence and do foolish things no one could understand. Currently, they had just said a few sentences but his temper had already erupted. That made Xu Wuhan bitterly smile. This child's temperament was too fierce. I don't mind suffering, but I won't let the people by my side suffer. If anyone dares touch them, I'll kill. I'll kill until those idiots learn what pain is, learn what fear is. Then they wouldn't use their idiot intelligence to challenge my patience, said Long Chen viciously. Compared to the corrupt path, Long Chen felt much more hate towards the righteous path's contemptible shamelessness. They were completely lacking any sense of justice, and their smiles hid their daggers. The pain they had brought Long Chen was much greater than the corrupt path, and it was much more difficult to guard against them. But the entire righteous path is now like that. How many can you kill? Said Xu Wuhan helplessly. I'll kill as many as I can kill. In any case, since we've stepped onto the cultivation path, we've long since thrown caution to the wind. Just how many kind-hearted cultivators are there? Since no one can know their future. Why not live as you please? Repaying gratitude and enmity? Why must you wrong yourself? If someone has the ability, then they can step over my corpse and I won't mind. But as long as I still have breath in me, I won't allow anyone to harm the people by my side, said Long Chen. Xu Wuhan was silent for a while, seeming to think of something. In the end, she sighed. All right, let's not continue on this topic. We've become a bit sidetracked. Let me just tell you about the news I've obtained. First. Let's talk about Huo Wufang. I don't know what medicine you fed him, but it ended up sinking into his bones, making him feel so much pain as to not want to live. Each day, he continuously consumes spirit medicines. But most terrifying of all, the poison in his bones cannot be removed and will absorb the spirit medicines to increase its own power and make Huo Wufang feel even more pain. Currently, his bones are still completely crushed, and they cannot be healed. Each day, he lies in bed like a pile of mush constantly wailing. Just what poison did you feed him? How could even the Pill Tower's alchemists be so powerless? Xu Wuhan couldn't help being astonished. Long Chen's methods must truly be bizarre for even the Pill Tower to not know how to relieve the poison. 
it had to be known that the pill tower represented those who had achieved the greatest level in the pill deo. In truth, this poison isn't that hard to remove. As long as they use a sixth tier antitoxin medicinal pill, the poison will disappear. However, that will bring about two consequences. One is that Hua Wufang will be in so much pain that he will hover between life and death, and he will very likely go insane. That kind of pain is not something ordinary people can endure. The second is that even if Hua Wufang manages to endure it, the poison in his bones has already completely coiled around his soul. Once the poison is forcibly removed, the poison that has coiled around his soul will wither. Once it withers, it will release a special toxin called Soul Contamination Star. That toxin will instantly invade his mind C, and that would be even worse than destroying his soul root. It will make him completely unable to use his spiritual strength. If he tried to use his spiritual strength at that time, he would feel a needle-like pain in his head. That toxin cannot be removed, but it also isn't fatal. However, being unable to use spiritual strength, he will no longer be able to refine pills. In the future, he would have to give up being a pill cultivator and focus on being a martial cultivator, explained Long Chen. Hearing this explanation, Xu Wuhan felt a chill. Long Chen really had been too vicious. This was crippling Hua Wufang's pill cultivation career, something even more terrifying than just killing him. Perhaps you might feel like that was too much, but I feel like this was simply right. When a woman I cared about used her body to block an attack for me, when she gave me that smile just before her death, I felt a thousand times the pain he's feeling. Unfortunately, my cultivation base back then wasn't high enough, or I would have used methods that would make him feel ten times the pain. Otherwise, wouldn't that be treating myself unfairly, said Long Chen, clenching his teeth. I've lived too long and seen too many things. I already don't know how to love, and I don't know how to hate. It's precisely because I don't have love that I don't feel any hate. So I have no way to understand your emotions. I don't have the right to criticize your actions. Let's return to the main point. Currently, Hua Wufang is half dead, infuriating the Huo family. However, because Hua Wufang ended up participating in the righteous and corrupt battle, a great violation of the Pill Tower's neutral oath, they can only accept this loss. However, the Huo family aren't the kind of people to just accept this. After all, the Huo family cares deeply about a person's talent. They also care deeply about the favorite of the family head. And this time you really were a bit excessive. Don't look at me like that. I'm just objectively commenting. Your conduct is a humiliation in the eyes of the Huo family and a provocation. Although the Pill Tower has three families supporting it, the Huo family definitely has a large say. They've secretly gone to the Zuanshan Dao sect to display their dissatisfaction. As for the Dao sect, they sent people over to ask me about what happened. They asked me to hand you over. They didn't want to cause the Pill Tower displeasure just because of one disciple. Hearing that, Long Chen's eyes narrowed and his fury soared. Fuck, who do they think they are? They think they can just toss me out? You don't need to be mad. That's just what a sect is. Everything is for the sect's growth. As for things that will hinder the sect's development or impair their profit, they must be mercilessly removed. Perhaps that is a bit unreasonable, but all sects are like that at the core. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to survive for countless years. Of course, my reply was that you're my disciple, and unless my disciple does something wrong, no one can punish my disciple, said Shu Wuhan. Although her words were light, they were also filled with resolve and an unswerving determination. Seeing Long Chen was about to say something, Xu Wuhan waved her hand. You don't need to thank me. I used you as a chiss piece before to handle Cao King Ayu. Now that she's been executed, you ended up helping me win this match. I naturally have to protect you, or wouldn't I become a petty person who forgets favors and gratitude? Cao King Ayu died. HMPH. I gathered proof on all those things she did over the years. This time. She ended up making an immense mistake, causing so many disciples to die. Even the Zhao family was not able to protect her. The Zhao family is often at odds with my Shu family, and this perfect victory even got me praise from the family head. Shu Wuhan smiled excitedly. On the other hand, Long Chen's heart turned a bit cold. Weak people had their small struggles, while strong people had their large struggles. No matter what realm you reached, no matter what power you had, you were always on a bloody battlefield. That was life. That was the cultivation world. No matter what level you reached, you would always be surrounded by complicated relationships and have to constantly fight. Was that humanity's nature? Could it be that cultivation was just for fighting? To trample your opponents under your feet? 
But once you trampled one opponent, so what? You would go to the next level and face even more opponents. Were you supposed to continuously trample them? In the end, Long Chen smiled icily inside. I don't care about that much. If you want to fight, then go fight. Just don't provoke me. That's how Wu Fang's current state. With me protecting you here, no one would dare do anything to you. Let me ask you, Long Chen, are you willing to join my Shu family? asked Shu Wuhan.